Suteni, who was in magnificent form against Exeter. There in the midfield, Raymond Rule, Dillian Laid, and Brees Doolan, the back row. And Leinster are just stuffed with Grand Slam winning quality. Andrew Porter, Dan Sheehan, Tyg Furlong, Ross Maloney and James Ryan, Caelan Doris, Josh Van Der Pleer, Jack Conan, Jameson Gibson Park, Ross Byrne, nine and 10, Robbie Henshaw and Gary Ringrose, the same 12 and 13 that won in Bilbao in 2018. James Lowe, Jimmy O'Brien and Hugo Keenan, Grand Slam winners, all three of them. A quick word then, Isn't this fantastic as we look around this yeah, place? Absolutely fantastic. As you said, a fitting final, two great teams. Uh, at the peak of their powers uh, and uh, very often in these tournaments you don't get the final that uh, most people want but this is the final everyone wants 100 percent and how quickly have they built up uh, an epic rivalry it's taken them two years a couple of games great they get to go toe to toe is this leinster's day of destiny or once again are the bogeymen from la rochelle gonna have the final say burn kicks off cleared by la rochelle just past the 22 doolan it was with his left boot and now, straight away, Dennis Hickey, good set-piece opportunity for Leinster. They like to launch from set plays. Yeah, I didn't think Ross Byrne kicked, caught it as he wanted to. Went a, a little bit long, but uh, Bryce Doolan showed a little bit of nerves. Not under a huge amount of pressure. Uh, a, a short enough kick from uh, considering the time he had. Dan Sheehan, the player of the match on Grand Slam Day. He goes into the middle of the line out, finds Jack Conan. Conan back to Sheehan. Sheehan for the corner, and he's got there. What a start from Leinster. Dennis Hickey punches the air, the same corner. Sheehan scored his second try against England. He's done it again, this force of nature at hooker, and it couldn't be a better start for Leinster. Absolutely, and they, they, they split the line, they dropped the line out so they had more gaps on the line out created the gap between Uno Antonio and his pod and the ball uh, was hit in the middle to Jack Conan who came from the scrum half position uh, with Dan Sheehan on the outside such pace and it's it's very often if you can if you have the if you have the guts to produce a play like that early on in the match you can catch a team everyone's really struggling just to get get their balance the adrenaline is up and it's a if you, if, if you know team very often play safe at the start get themselves into the game great teams can do something like that and what a start from Leinster it's just a perfect bit of analysis even as we say the kick might have been a little bit long maybe that was the plan all along chuck it deep give them no option they'll kick it out we've got a little trick play set up the midfield as if they're going to blast their back row runner straight down the middle get rid of your winger hide him in midfield paint the picture that it's going to go somewhere other than where it actually is which is back to the short side and you've got your hooker who is as quick as anybody on the field absolutely so amazing speed brilliant well, finish well, we often say before finals oh they've they've got to bring something different that was different that was innovative that was class and leinster lead in the aviva and if there were nerves around they'll still be there but they may have just been relaxed a little bit by that dan sheehan try every point counts in finals ross Byrne, what is he exactly in between the five and the 15 in from touch just outside the 22 short run up not the best strike but it's good enough it's over 7-0 Leinster yeah Rossburn the second highest point score in the in the tournament obviously behind his his opposite number uh, uh, with 81 points and knocks over I, I don't know Paul look my heart is pumping after that try how do you as a kicker stand up after after going so quickly yeah try to compose yourself and slot that conversion you hear the golfer say they just want to make contact with the ball there was there's quite a lot of sock in that conversion. It doesn't matter. It went between. He'll settle. Well, Conan's off again from the kickoff. And Leinster have got La Rochelle on the run already. We've only played a couple of minutes. Gibson Park finds low. He puts his left boot through it. Long kick to Doolan. Wearing 15 for La Rochelle. Started the final this time last year when La Rochelle pipped Leinster in the same fixture. But in Marseille, his clearance kick is solid. Christoph Ridley on the far side. Two English ARs with Carl Dixon, the man in the middle, is the South African Jaco Piper. She to throw Paul Grayson halfway line. Perfect start though for Leinster. Strike early, get the crowd on their feet. They're in a good mood. They'll relax a little bit. The noise will go up. All pressure on La Rochelle. She and the try scorer finds Conan, who's been everywhere in the first few minutes. Van der Fleer peels away. Gibson Park finds low. Oh, they're looking for a 50 22. They've got another set move here. Has low executed it? I think he has. Oh my oh, goodness. This has just been a start you can only dream of as a Leinster player and fan. But, you know, going back to the point I made at the start, you've got to have guts to call these plays, but then you've got to have the execution. Like that was. That was a left, he's a, on the left side using his left foot, so he doesn't get the right to left movement, and he's still able to kick it close enough 
and get a, what is a fantastic attacking position. But you know, brilliant execution. Gets that wrong, they're back for a scrum yeah. at halfway, you know. Five metre line out to Leinster. A few guys have just walked behind us, taking their seats with their pints. You've missed the plenty of action, chaps. It's already 7-0. Conan again, they peel away. Oh, this time Sheehan can't get it and they don't execute. There was a knock on in the tackle though, so it will be a scrum to Leinster, but they weren't able to quite get that trick play right. But talking of trick plays, Paul Grayson, they've come up with a couple that have really paid off. Yeah, they went, they dummied them all and then did the, uh, pass the ball as if it was going to go out the back and wide again, but reversed it to James Lowe. That was Ireland, uh, they, they use him to exit, don't they? Ireland use him, he's got a great left boot. Yeah. Normally just a bit of a howitzer, but they're really cultured. Yeah. End over end push. And I tell you, when, he, when he joined, his kicking his kick chase game, it wasn't a big part of his game in New Zealand, but they spent a huge amount of time developing. He's clearly spent a huge amount of time, and it's become a real weapon for Leinster. But in these sort of finals, by the way, that's not that's a missed opportunity for mm. Leinster. You know, you know, they got a hand in. Larishal got a hand in. Sheen was coming around at serious pace, running a two at two uh, backs and uh, you know that's that's an opportunity lost for Leicester for sure five meter scrum Gibson Park lows off his wing and just barrels into the heart of the La Rochelle defense six meters out Gibson Park finds Kalen Doris what a season he's having lightning fast ball Ross Maloney now comes around the corner met by a couple of yellow shirts slap bang in center field they may have numbers to the right oh it's gone out to Keenan Hugo Keenan's only a meter short Gibson Park Ross Burn wide to Jimmy O'Brien and they've got two Two tries already, Leinster. We've only played five minutes. But it's great speed, incredible fast recycling. In, in the face of some huge hits from La Rochelle, some really big defence there from Jonathan Dante. Uh, and they managed to recycle as they do so quickly. Van der Fleer then looked, as he often does, the red, the red cap looked like he was getting the ball, went, went out the back to, to uh, Hugo Keenan. He got absolutely smashed by Dante, but he was able to turn quickly. Quick ball, Ross Byrne flat, and in the corner, uh, it's uh, it's Jimmy O'Brien. What a great start for Leinster. And Larishel can't get the big shots on because Leinster are painting pitches. They're offering them the targets, and then the ball isn't going there. There was one confrontational carry in that whole piece. The rest are trying to find the soft edges with a bit of disguise, smoke and mirrors. It's working an absolute treat. 12 nil. Jimmy O'Brien in at the corner. He was fantastic, wasn't he, in that second half in the Grand Slam game when Keenan had to go off, but it was Keenan's burst and just a lightning fast ball. That was kind of the theme tactically. If La Rochelle break the game up, make it a set piece battle, stunt the flow, it's anyone's. But if Leinster are allowed to get that speed of ball, there is not a team on the planet who can live with them, international or club. Maybe Ireland, actually, because they're kind of the same. <laughs> yeah. um, but where did it come from? Fantastic line out playing a brilliant kick from James Lowe to give him field position. Mm. And Ross Byrne from the right-hand touchline to turn 12 to 14 as he just slid it across the face. He's hit the post. Very close, but not quite. But with seven minutes gone, Dennis Hickey in your wildest dreams as a former Leinster player and now a Leinster supporter. Would you have thought 12-0 two tries? I certainly would have. I don't think anyone in the stadium would have figured that. And um, now it's, you know, it's the psychology of rugby. How do Leinster keep the, the foot on the pedal? For sure, La Rochelle are coming back into this game some, at some stage, but they've got to keep make this momentum count Inside. and they've got to not let any soft opportunities for La Rochelle to get back into the game. You hear the voice there of Jaco Piper, the referee will have him on hand to talk us through any big moments as Lowe clears the lines and now Brees Doolan skips past O'Brien and La Rochelle go into Leinster territory for pretty much the first time today, barring the kickoffs. Can they work a little bit of their shape? Red Award is setting nice. up the loose head prop. They have some of the most uniquely powerful men in world rugby. Here is perhaps the greatest of all of them, Will Skelton, who barrels over halfway. There for Kerr Barlow. Over to Dante now, who's met by a good tackle from Robbie Henshaw. Dante manages to hold firm because he's so big, but that was good line speed from, from Henshaw and from Leinster. Poor pass from Hastoy, checked Dante, so he's an easy target. Will Skelton is a massive well, target. He sets it up. So far, so good for Leinster from this defensive set. But Aldred almost gets past Ross Byrne. And he goes over halfway with a really industrious carry. To the right they come. Working the halfway line on the short side. Nice from Bottier. Out to Lades on the right touch line. They've now gone into the Leinster half. But they've taken seven odd phases to do it. Head down again from the 
La Rochelle forwards, 12-0 Leinster, great noise around the Aviva. The home crowd's an amazing voice. Suteni juggles with it, but just about gets it away. Rule now flips it over to Budahon on this left touchline. That's a good carry from the young number six. Good stuff this from La Rochelle as Raymond Rule picks and goes through the ruck. Doris trying to get on the ball, but it's there for the all-black hair Barlow. Here's Weenie Antonio, he sets it up. Huge clear from Skelton on Van der Fleer. That made Paul Grayson wince. Aldrit sets it up. No quarter asked and no quarter given. It's the Champions Cup final. You'd expect nothing else. Will La Rochelle be forced to go to the boot? That'll be a feather in the cap for the Leinster defence. Or can Rule get it over to this touchline? Through comes Keenan and makes a shot on Budahon. Van der Fleer gets the turnover. Penalty to Leinster. Great defensive set. And Gibson Park's gone quickly. He's caught by Kerr Barlow. Clever play from the nine. They've got penalty advantage and they may have numbers. Ross Byrne kicks over a foot. O'Brien on the far side. Not quite. He'd switch wings to number 14. Back for the penalty, Dennis. Yeah. Oof, what a passage of play. Just one thing, you know, that, that we saw offline here. I, I'm not sure if the penalty has been... No, no, yes, it's a penalty. One thing just saw... One thing we just saw off, um, off, off camera here was uh, an absolute monster clear out by uh, Will Skelton. He's, he's a card of him, is he? Yeah. Defco Park has given wow. a yellow card to wear a Kerbalo. Gibson Park took the quick tap penalty. Never on the mark for my money. He was two yards in front of it. Piper let him go. He ran four or five yards. Kerbalo tackled him. Referee's given a penalty and a yellow card. That's very tough. Oh, jeez. Not for the, if, if for that's my what it's for. Yeah, just off, off, off camera, you had a huge, huge clear out. Josh van der Fleer, World Player of the Year, t taking the ball, uh, going in for the poach. And Will Skelton, absolutely monster in the clear out. But what he also did is he lay on him for about 20 seconds just to stop and take him out of the play. Yellow card to Kerr Barlow, 12 0 Leinster. It's harsh, but referee Pike, Piper hot on cynical play. Overthrown from Leinster, though. Then La Rochelle lose it. It's back in Leinster possession in the La Rochelle 22. Robbie Henshaw drives on. 12 0, 17 or 19 0. It's proper dreamland stuff. Sheehan's on the right touchline, and Dan Sheehan scores from Gibson Park's pass. This is unbelievable. Aldridge, Aldridge calling the forward pass. He's, he's really remonstrating with, uh, I think it's Andrew Dixon on the sideline. He's calling him and he's going to speak to the referee. He's going to speak to Jakob Piper. He's absolutely livid about something. You know, he's a pretty mild-mannered guy, very passionate player, but he's really not happy. Levani Bottier was in and over the ball. Aldridge was in and over the ball. Convinced that they got a penalty, but they got narrow. Hail Mary pass over to the left from Gibson Park. Again, it's that man Sheehan on the outside, five metres to the line and one metre of space is all he needs to get over. That's it, Chris. Mike's down. Let's go home. Right. Done. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure, these guys have come back well, into the game. And we said sure. we, we were doing the game last night, Dennis, and we said, whatever happens, it will not be as one-sided as last night in the Champions Cup final because however good Leinster are, especially on this Aviva turf, who would have thought three tries in 12 minutes? Officials happy, Greg Aldrete wasn't. And now we've been talking up Ronan O'Gara. What a test of his coaching when you're 17-0 down. Is it 19-0? He's at the same post, would you believe? So stays at 17-0. Sheehan's got two tries. And so many of these players have taken a massive step up to so world-class status and Sheehan has got another two tries to go with his two in the Grand Slam incredible. game. Incredible, Paul. He's, he's, he's missed two conversions from the, cor the you know, right at the touchline. When you hit the post with such a difficult kick, do you say to yourself, well, such a difficult kick, or do you go, I've missed two kicks, I, the pressure's on me. You, you, never, you ne never give yourself the ease of saying, um, that was a good kick, it doesn't matter, it didn't go over. Cleared from low after Conan took the restart. Doolan's under it. What do La Rochelle have? We know they've got quality. We know they've got power. They've got pace. But they'll seldom have been 17 0 down. Wardy from Bottier's pass. Bottier playing in at scrum half. He's got to go play scrum half again. A Leinster player comes on the wrong side. It's going to be a penalty La Rochelle. That will give them a chance for field position. Hastoy over to Lades on the far side. He was player of the match, wasn't he? Dillian Lades in the cup final last year, which was won by La Rochelle. Halfway line, Pierre Bougarie, this is our standing hooker. 
Five years of French international now. Dante, another player who's excelled in the blue of France and the yellow of La Rochelle. Hastoy chips for himself. This could be interesting. Henshaw's back. No advantage. Penalty for, I think, not rolling away. And that's, that's an area where La Rochelle had the ascendancy last year in the in the breakdown their ability to slow Leinster down conversely in this game their ability to make sure they resource the rook with enough people to deal with the threats that Leinster have right across the field in competition to steal the ball back they got it right that time Leinster gambled and uh, went in after the rook was already formed so they give the penalty away but you can you're almost sucking in breath every breakdown Dennis that Leinster are going to nick it yeah absolutely but They've done their homework, La Rochelle. You know that they've, they've, they, they know they have to make every rook count. And you see guys like Will Skelton and, um, and Uno Antonio. When they hit you, clearing out, you stay cleaned out, you know? <laughs> 17 metres out, La Rochelle with the line out to Skelton at the front. And now the La Rochelle, the this yellow mall is on the march. But as Doris got in there to steal, he may well yes. have done, making up for his penalty concession. Oh. It's been turned over, then lost by Lowe. Van der Fleer didn't play it, that would have been a penalty, but it means the Bottier can pick it up. Right, La Rochelle are only five away. They trail by 17, penalty, then though. they lose it. But the first was that knock on, wasn't it? Oh. When it went back to low. He didn't really expect it because it was an incredible turnover from Doris, but I think he was also slightly La I think he was slightly blind. I think there was just somebody in the passing channel. Well, maybe not. I think it was just it was a pretty low pass as well though. Gibson Park. Not, sim not particularly sympathetic, but you saw La Rochelle were on the march there. Somebody from Leinster got in, I think Kelvin Doris scored the ball, but they looked like they were motoring, or beginning to motor. Yeah, and, having, and then having made the mistake and knocked the ball on themselves, they got the favour returned with James Lowe just fumbling the ball, so that rather than being pushed back another 30 or 40 metres, they get their chance at a, uh, an attacking scrum in control of the ball, so they... First scrum of the game. Yeah, exactly. They don't need to get the ball out quick. They can maybe put the squeeze on uh, on Leinster and see what they've got. Yeah, first feed, but not from their regular nine because Kebalo's in the bin. I see um, down at the touchline there, Leinster scrum coach Rob, Robin McBride, former Welsh forwards coach, is <sighs> intently focused yeah. on what's <laughs> happening next. He's almost, <laughs> he's almost on the he's pitch. He's almost looks like he's better run onto the pitch himself. <laughs> he's the amount of work, he, you know, the amount of work that goes on in preparation for these games. His job is to make sure this scrum holds. Well, the scrum is straight away splintered. Interesting with Ker Barlow in the bin, doulan has gone to play at nine. These French guys are also talented, they can play everywhere, but he wouldn't have had much experience of getting that feed and the timing, because we know if La Rochelle get their scrum right, they are, they are an absolute machine. Yeah, the, the, look, the, the complexities of a straight feed and uh, an accurate strike from the hooker are long gone. <laughs> yeah. They've got, they got to show that they're striking and they just wang it to the number eight. Yeah, true, true. Right, Doolan to feed and this, oh, it's, a, it's a monumental front row with Wardy, Bougarit and Weenie Antonio. 50 French caps at the age of 33. Hello. And with Will Skelton in support and Levana Botter on the flank, they've got some of the most impressive athletes in the world game. 17-0 Leinster, 17 minutes gone on Radio 5 Sports Extra. Again, the scrum splinters. And we can't have too many more resets, can we, before referee Yaka Pipe will have to make a call either way. He's had two resets so far. And given it's La Rochelle's feet, given La Rochelle are five metres out, La Rochelle just needs to try and paint that picture of dominance. Yeah, for sure. And you'd really, you'd, you know, I don't, what I know about scrummaging, you can write on the back of a postage stamp on you'd really think that uh, if Jaco Piper he's looking at it and going you know what, what why would it be in, in uh, uh, La Rochelle's interest for this scrum to go down you know, it's, you a, it's, sense. A, it's a hell of a bluff if they just repeatedly <laughs> keep collapsing their own scrum exactly 17-0 unbelievable start from Leinster Dan Sheehan has scored two tries Jimmy O'Brien another all in the same right hand corner the corner where Robbie Henshaw and Sheehan scored en route to the Grand Slam. La Rochelle's scrum is starting to motor forward. It's going to be a penalty advantage. Aldrit picks. Aldrit's almost up to the line. Aldrit is over the line. He's held up. Back for the penalty. Surely La Rochelle keeps scrummaging. Yes. They were really, they were really under the cash there. That's exactly what they don't want in this game. They don't want scrums. And Andrew Porter is, as they say in uh, professional wrestling, wearing a crimson mask. So he's going to need some patching up. <laughs> his ear. His, uh, the, 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 the cauliflower ear splitting and opening again. 
a breathing space sometimes a bit of chance for Leinster to yes yeah take. yeah it, it's sometimes handy isn't it yeah. I mean that era will clear up in nine or ten years when he stops playing yeah that's, that's um, great Roundtree. massive power from the La Rochelle pack Antonio going to work on the tight head huge man but that I mean Dennis you played in teams where you know when your scrum gets the nudge the scoreboard takes on a different complexion because you know that the, the opposition make an error you can get into that cycle of scrum penalty very field position dominance yeah and all of a sudden that if there is a gap you, you know you have a level of confidence that well if you can just a few more of these now will chi will chip away will lead into it and the referees eventually they get they get tired and then they start looking at it and they get they lose patience right we're still waiting for this scrum but they have gone for the scrum again La Rochelle and perhaps sensing an opportunity they're a man down in the backs with Kerbalo in the bin for another 90 seconds it's a solid La Rochelle scrum Aldrich's at the base he's trying to control it now Doolan flips it out Hastoy to Dante oh! and oh Dante's going to be in here I think he's scored what power from Jonathan Dante bounced off a Leinster player and managed to dot it down with one arm a big old power play from La Rochelle I just thought for a split second he might have he might have lost control of it just gone over the line it was a it but was he a, didn't deserve to because it was a fantastic bit of personal skill he just bunched off Gary Ringwell it's not an easy thing to do that is some power isn't it some power from Dante a man down no subtlety once the scrum had collapsed Piper wasn't given any more penalties they're not checking the ground in the same carry on James Bryan being sent back under his own post try given Hastoy with a tap in to make it a full seven points amazing acceleration over two or three meters from Dante and then the physical resilience and power to bounce off the tackle avoid the extra defender and reach out over the line Hastoy bangs over the goal right Lens the 17, La Rochelle 7. And to seeing a replay, it was the most simple move for Gary Ringrose has been bounced off by Dante. And he's definitely got that down, hasn't he? He lost it afterwards. Yeah. But I think the actual process of grounding it was pretty good from Jonathan Dante. Yeah, yeah. that's a very fair try. And Gary, Gary Ringrose just got his head on the wrong side. Just going in with his, it was a right shoulder tackle. And he went in with the left and just got that, got that done by a very, very powerful Jonathan Dante. Well, it's, La Roche, it's what La Rochelle needed, and from a neutral's point of view, it's what the game needed, even though, you know, they were always going to come back. They're champions, they're second in the top 14, they're a world-class outfit. But 17-0, they would have been shell-shocked. They've done well to rally with 14 men and get that try. Well, they also showed Leinster and everyone in the ground, if there's going to be scrums and malls close to the Leinster line, Leinster are going to be under a lot of pressure in this game, and that's, they need to play, Leinster need to play all the rugby in this half. Well, Leinster are putting pressure on the La Rochelle ruck, but it's there for Kerr Bala, who is back on. So full complement, 15 on 15. The crowd are whistling, maybe not appreciating how La Rochelle are just trying to take some pace out the game. But Leinster just need to show some composure here because La Rochelle are boxed deep in their own 22. And the crowd are really getting on the case of Kerr Barlow, who's going to take his time to clear. He's helped out by uh, Weenie Antonio as a blocker, and now he will kick. But if this goes out, it will still give Leinster a good set-piece opportunity. Not it's not out. It's taken by Keenan, who dances round Raymond Rule, who does well to tackle the Ireland fullback round his ankles. 17-7 to Leinster. Jack Conan's been everywhere in the opening 20-odd oh, minutes. Penalty advantage was that Bottier. And Gibson Park was going to go quickly, but referee Piper has penalised La Rochelle for not releasing. And Ross Burns going for the corner, Paul and Dennis, but no. do wonder in a final whether three points might be in order. I think he'll have a shot here. Well, they're having a chat and they are going to have a shot. Interesting because straight away, Byrne looked to the corner. James Ryan's maybe had a word. Yeah. This was a talking point in the press conference yesterday with James Ryan. Will you take the points? Will you try and build in threes? Will you go for the corner? This time they're going for the three. Yeah, and that makes sense. We just got a little flash. You hear the cheers there of the crowd. Ronan O'Gara flashed up, banging his desk. Didn't agree with the penalty. I personally, I agree with Ronan O'Gara. Bottier had a crack for the ball, got cleared out never actually made contact with the ball so I don't know how he's guilty of not releasing the player it's just look play on to me almost Piper's come in with that idea that Bottier sometimes just stays in there too long but you've got to ref what you see not a penalty for me well Bottier's jackaling in the quarterfinal against Saracens was, was 
Perhaps the best there's ever been in the game. He, made, he won about five holding on penalties, three in about three minutes. He is astonishing. He, he's ridiculous, but there's been noises out of the Leinster camp saying, oh, is he always legal? And, and referee Piper very hot on the La Rochelle Jackal game there. For 27, Ross Byrne, good kick. Leinster 20, La Rochelle 7. Yeah, it, it, right decision for me, for sure. In nine times out of ten, Leinster kicked to the corner in those positions, but they just conceded a try. La Rochelle, in the, in, in, you know, put seven points on the board. All of a sudden, they've chipped away a little bit at that, so put a little bit more daylight between them. The right call for me, but they need to get out of this half. Get out of this half, play the ball down there, keep away any chance of scrums, penalties, line-outs that are close to the line, uh, close to the, uh, uh, the Leinster line. Voice of Leinster legend Dennis Hickey alongside us on Radio 5 Sports Extra. Champions Cup final commentary from the BBC as Gibson Park sends it high, almost as high as the top tier as the Aviva, at the Aviva Stadium. And Jimmy O'Brien, who's switched wings a couple of times, he took it on the left wing, wearing 14. Gibson Park out to James Ryan, who just sticks his head down, just short of the halfway line, 15 metres in from touch. Back to Byrne, who's looking for a bit of territory. Hastoy, the number 10 for La Rochelle, scampers back. Nicely judged and nicely weighted that from Ross Byrne, Paul Grayson. And we're going all the way back for a penalty. La Rochelle offside. And La Rochelle, Grace, just cannot get on the right side of Jakob Piper here. No, they can't. And, and, but, but some of it, or just watching what the Leinster are doing with their backfield, um, the reason that Jimmy O'Brien was on the far side chasing the box hit because they have James Lowe sat in the pocket for the long clear. They move Hugo Keenan out to the right wing, so he's in a position for a crossfield um, kick pass. So all the pieces are moving constantly, uh, and it's very difficult for La Rochelle to get their their backfield organised to cover all the options in the middle of all that they're giving a routine back foot penalty away in the middle of the field but a, a nothing in a nothing a position where Leinster are just kicking the ball away it's uh, hugely frustrating if you're the coach and the players will start feeling oh yeah we, we can't do anything right here to this referee and the referees may be against us but we all know in these games these changes the referees change they balance things out maybe not consciously but typically subconsciously at least I think. 20 points to 7 to Leinster who win it at the front of the line up through Maloney they're trying to get them all going on Leinster 15 minutes to go uh, until half time it's been lost then by Leinster they don't like it Leinster and they wondered whether it was it was lost in the tackle by La Rochelle but referee Jaco Piper has given a scrum to La Rochelle although Christopher Ridley's coming okay, a bit from the from the far oh, side let's have a look at the replay Steve, because Gibson Park yeah, he's saying that um, he's onside and bound. Old Drit was onside and bound, so it's a knock-on by Lens. The crowd don't like it. Scrum La Rochelle. It's a, it's a mall. You got to know your laws. He's high up on the side of the mall, but he's uh, attached to it. As soon as the scrum half gives him part, breaks the ball out of the mall. He is onside and can play the scrum half. He tapped him on the arm. Gibson Park drops it forward. Lens fans don't care. No, they, they don't. <laughs> it's a matter of the. Who cares about the rules if it goes against us? Yeah, yeah, exactly. that's, what they're, that's what they're saying. But yeah. again, not unlike that 50-22, uh, a lost opportunity. Very good attacking platform there for Leicester. This is the this is sort of accuracy they need to be able to execute these, uh, these, these in these finals. Any sort of opportunity you've got to make them count. And a fantastic bit of defence by one of the world's great players, Gregory Alder. Very smart, came through. And you know, you, as a player, a defensive player, you actually know you have to know if you're bound or not. You have to know if you're in the right decision. Otherwise, it's three points. Yeah, a bit of a risk from Aldrit, but as Dennis Hickey's saying, he knew exactly what he was doing, executed that bit of spoiling work to perfection, and then lends the giveaway a free kick at the scrum, so Paul Grayson, La Rochelle can get out their own 22. Yeah, and it's, it's a good gamble from Leinster there, let's not forget that, the, you know, this is a, rugby's a game of infringement, and if you can, if you can push the rules, when you're, whether you're in the breakdown or in the scrum, Leinster there want the referee to give a free kick, so that they're challenging La Rochelle to say, have another scrum in your own half, I dare you because you can get it wrong as it is they go to the air. Beautifully mild and dry day in Dublin. Hasto whacked it into the slightly overcast but very cool Dublin skies. Now in Leinster possession, Gibson Park back to burn on his own 10 metre line. Another high hanging kick. Okay. The game has just slightly slowed in pace, become a bit more of a tactical battle of wits now in the last few minutes after that breathtaking Leinster start that saw them score three tries in 12 minutes. 20 points to seven. The Irish lead with 12 minutes to go until half time. La Rochelle through Bougarie just outside their own 22. Now Aldrich picks through the middle of the ruck and 
Takes a couple of Lensterman with him. One of them, Gary Ringrose. Kerr Barlow out to Hastoy. Hastoy then throws it out to Suteni and then Laid slightly playing with fire here, La Rochelle, on their own 22. There wasn't much guile to that attack from La Rochelle. And Leinster are working hard to try and counter run. Van der Fleer's all over it. He has made such a menace of himself. He wanted a penalty, as did the crowd. La Rochelle are still attacking from their own 22. Suteni's caught by Gibson Park. Clever play from Suteni. Huge hit there from James Ryan following oh, up. It's Suteni. all happening. Suteni managed to drop the ball seven style to avoid giving a penalty away. But Hastoy has to go to touch. And that is a very impressive defensive set from Leinster, albeit Paul Grayson. A great clearance from Hastoy. It's Hasn't bounced the yard in. It's bounced the yard in. James Lowe has carried it. Oh, it's great. Breakneck speed the game. It slowed in tempo ever so slightly. Now it's back helter skelter stuff. Antonio barrels off one man, sets it up. 40 meters out, 30 go. really from their own line. La Rochelle got numbers out here. La Rochelle. There are Ireland. Uh, there are Leinster forwards on the wrong side, walking a little bit. They couldn't quite see it. Now Aldrit gets it out to Sarzi, who almost made half a break. Kerr Barlow, Hastoy off the line is Ringrose. What a tackle, Gary Ringrose. And now here's the counter run. It's going to be a penalty, is it, to Leinster? Or it's going to be a turnover. Penalty, Leinster. La Rochelle into the side. Hey, James Ryan, James Ryan took a heavy blow there. He didn't look good. And now a fight breaks out between the two sets of forwards. Most of the backs also, also get involved. James, though, doesn't bother. Nor does Gibson Park. Sensible. Well, what a defensive set. There were perhaps numbers for La Rochelle, couldn't use them, and Lens to get the better of them, and they win a penalty. Yeah, and Ringrose has grown as a player. His defensive reads, he's given a license when he decides that he can shut it down on his own, comes flying out of the line. One too many phases from La Rochelle to try and go to the width where they did have the advantage, but after the collision in midfield, Leinster restored numbers. Ringrose read it beautifully, and Jacko Piper's just letting whatever happen at the breakdown perfect for Leinster I'm surprised I'm surprised James Ryan's not going off for HIA two two medics for that no he is going off for HIA he took it he did take a blow and I noticed that you know he's put himself around and Will Skelton's making a point of, of uh, making it difficult from every time because he's such a big player for Leinster well Ryan will be replaced by it's a big well, blow. If he doesn't come back on, that yeah, is a big blow. Either Jason Jenkins or Ryan Baird. Both can play lock. It's going to be Jenkins. Maybe holding Baird back a bit later, uh, for later in the game. Going for goal again. I think that's probably sensible, is it, Paul Grayson? 20 points to 7. Go to 23. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, inside the 15-metre line, 30 metres out. No gimmies in finals unless you're right under the sticks, but he'd expect to get it. Well, I think a bit of, you know, uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes a, a bit of a dust up can galvanise a team. And uh, with La Rochelle under the pump a little bit, it might have been the sort of thing that they would have welcomed a, a bit of physical conf confrontation straight away. So taking a bit of steam out of the game, if they can punish them for that uh, for that passage of play, that'd be a great result for Leinster. Well, unbelievable 30 minutes of rugby. That start from Leinster, we'll never forget that. Three tries in 12 minutes. La Rochelle have stemmed the tide somewhat, but Byrne has kicked a penalty, and now he's lining up a second penalty to take the lead out to 23 points to seven, which is massive in a final. Although we know La Rochelle can strike from anywhere, and they have big game players to make key interventions, such as Jonathan Dante for that try. Byrne to extend the gap to 16. He nails it. Leinster 23, La Rochelle seven. Only 30 minutes gone of the cup final. La Rochelle find it really difficult to get out of their own half. Leinster playing their way in, and even if, it, as Dennis said, they've missed a couple of opportunities to to capitalise on that, what they've forced La Rochelle to do is to try and play from deep. They're swarming all over them in defence and in the breakdown, getting the advantage. The other thing as well, Leinster have a bit of a breeze as well, and this, I'd say, you know, that and, and La Rochelle be ba banking on that for the second half. Back from Gibson Park to Lowe, who clears his lines. It's a solid kick, no. not spectacular. Carl Dixon's given him a few metres there, I think. Yeah. We, we were right above this. Wow. And uh, yeah, Dixon's given him about five or well, yeah, at, least five at, least extra, five. at least five extra metres. It's home advantage for you, I suppose. And the message is... Or, just, or just poor positioning from the touch judge. He was level with the kicker as opposed to further up the field. 
where he would have had a decent line of sight as the ball coming towards him because if you've ever watched Leinster play there's only two things that are going to happen from there they're either going to box kick it or give it to James Lowe and whack it off Buguri throws into the line out taken by Budahan the number six for La Rochelle can they get this yellow mall going forward it's pretty solid Buguri's at the back a few Leinster players are on the floor but a few La Rochelle players are on their feet and they're driving on La Rochelle this is a good mall from La Rochelle their best of the final so far Bottier breaks away there for Kerr Barlow 23-7 to Leinster eight to go until the break out to Will Skelton who sets it up now here's Jonathan Dante. Yeah, he was too, too smart there. That was the hooker Bougarie. Against the 23, La Rochelle 7. It's been a phenomenal first 32 minutes here, Steve. Leinster scored three tries in 12 minutes, playing some of the most breathtaking rugby you will ever see. La Rochelle have come back into the game slightly with a Jonathan Dante try, but two Ross Byrne penalties takes the gap out to 16 points. And Leinster are getting all the whistle from Jaco Piper, the referee as well. Leinster on top. 23 points to seven their fans can dream of that fifth champions cup just updating our listeners on on radio five live sports report over with steve crossman five till six and there's another pat didn't see what the penalty was for but another example dennis hickey of uh, of la rochelle not getting on the right side yeah of the no, what, what it was is and i've, I've seen this throughout the game james ryan uh, and josh van der Veer, two huge players for leicester particularly counter rooking and a nuisance at rooks and will skelton is just following james ryan around bashing him every time he gets near the ball and anytime josh van der Veer gets near the ball and they get a chance to clear him out uh, they, they sit on him they hold his leg they don't let him get up and uh, Bougary, the, uh, the, the La Rochelle coach there, he just held on to him a little bit longer. Van der Fleer was nowhere near the ball, touched it, spotted it, whistled it in, and a penalty. Just a real soft penalty against, uh, against La Rochelle. Is Bottier coming off? No, I think he's changing his shorts. Oh, he's changing his shorts. Well, that would have been nigh on disastrous for La Rochelle. Their magnificent Fijian, who hasn't wreaked havoc yet on the breakdown. They've, they're not reading referee Piper. Uh, there are the whistles of appreciation from the crowd as Bottier changes his shorts and he's up and ready for the line out. Penalty to Leinster was taken up to the 10 metre line. Sheehan to throw into the line out in La Rochelle territory. And here we go for another Leinster onslaught. From a set piece, they will have a plan. Conan at the front of the line out gives the park out to Henshaw. Better line speed that from La Rochelle, who desperately want to try and stop this Leinster flow. Doris drives on. There's a turnover from La Rochelle. This time they get the holding on pen. It's what they've been looking for for 33 minutes. This time they play the referee nicely and they get the pen. Grateful of any body there. He somehow managed to get in between clear. And there wasn't a whole lot of daylight between between the ball carrier. I think it was Caelan Doris and Jason Jenkins. But he just got in in between both of them. Really fantastic bit of poaching play there. Hastoy from just inside his own half. He looks towards the 22. Yeah. Good kick, Hasloy, Paul Grayson. Opportunity for La Rochelle on the 22. And that's exactly what they've failed to do so far in this first 34 minutes is to make a decent shot and give themselves a clean look with a Leinster player on the floor at getting a turnover. Bottier is a master. They've had to chance their arm because of Leinster's dom dominance so far and found himself on the wrong side of the referee. Here they are now, though, on the front foot for the first time. Bougarie throws into the line out, one at the front by La Rochelle who set up this mall. Furlong is in there trying to lend his considerable weight. They stop the mall, so Kerr Barlow has the feed, Bottier who goes through Van der Fleer and into the 22 goes Bottier. Kerr Barlow to the right, he comes, has been dropped by La Rochelle? Yes it has, Ringrose picks up and with glee he belts it downfield. Sloppy stuff from La Rochelle, Ringrose just smashed it 60 odd metres. Doolan's back, he's got Gibson Park all over him. And Doolan has to kick off his wrong foot. And this might give Lowe a counter-attacking opportunity. Lowe urged on by the whole of Dublin. He nudges oh, it forward. Kick. Hasn't quite caught that as Dennis Hickey suggested. He's then slightly late, is he, on uh, Hastoy. No referee was happy. Henshaw, own 10 metre line. Another huge Gary Owen from Robbie Henshaw. Under its care, Barlow. Nice ball out there to Hastoy, who switches with Levani Bottier. Bottier into Gibson Park, that's a physical mismatch. Leinster might be on that ball, looking for the steal. No, there for Kerr Barley, but they're inside the own half. Antonio, good hands, that was out to Red Awardy. Good hands from Antonio. The numbers here potentially for La Rochelle. There's a little kick from Hastoy for yeah, Suteni. Suteni could be onto this, he knocks on. That would have been a chance. 
Such no a... knock, says. Oh, no knock. And it's been kicked forward by Budahan. And he's playing football here. And he's almost got it down. Well done, Hugo Keenan. No knock. They said it was off the legs of Suteni. After all that, goal line dropout. Oh, it was off his legs as well. I think all the Leicester players just stopped. Just stopped for a second. It split second. And, then, and all of a sudden, Tyg Furlong found himself in the position to be the last player back there, chasing back and Kerbala behind him. Who has a big uh, it was a big passage of play for both sides, took a little bit out of both of them. A lot of hands on hips there. Yeah, what a game. What a game with four minutes to go to half time. Yeah, you're absolutely into it now. Lung busting stuff. Four minutes till half time. This is where mistakes can happen. Pure fatigue. Long goal line dropout from Rossburn. Doolan to Gregory Aldrich, who gets past Gary oh, Ringrose. 10 metre line in Leinster's Don't half. Three and a half minutes to go until half time. 23 7 to the men in blue who are just over 40 minutes away from a fifth Champions Cup. But La Rochelle aren't going to give up without a fight. Doolan drives into the 22. Nice play from the men in yellow. Bougari drives on. Now to the left they come. Raymond Rule is tackled. The South African international. Here's Will Skelton. Will he be a wallaby at the World Cup? You would bet your bottom dollar with those kind of carries. Numbers, here, numbers to the right, but Antonio only knows one way. Lightning numbers fastball. Care Barlow goes to the right. Rule is upended quite literally. Who's got their hands on this one? It's still there for La Rochelle, who trailed 23 7 with a couple of minutes to go until the break. They're going through the phases. They're only seven metres out. Have Leinster got a turnover in here? Or is it still in La Rochelle possession? The latter. Skelton gets the offload away brilliantly to Lades. Lades goes back inside. Backwards, says the referee. Bottier is wrestled to the ground eventually. Five metres out, the champions. 23-7, they trail. Another try would give this game a completely different complexion. Care Barlow to Aldrete. Felled by Maloney, but not before making a metre or two. Out to Antonio, who's carried manfully the tight head. Care Barlow, out numbers. to Hastoy, might be numbers. Number. Oh, what a try. Suteni's try. in. Great rugby from the champions. And they are right back in this final now. Killer time to concede as well for Leinster. A killer time. James Ryan's off the pitch. Doesn't look, look like he's come back on. And La Rochelle at their finest. Quick ball themselves just creating numbers and the huge men in the middle uh, Antonio uh, and of course the giant skeleton just causing havoc because it's taken two or three every single time Leinster supporters there howling uh, at that offload they thought I think they thought that uh, it, uh, it thought that Lades uh, had dropped the ball but it actually went back the ball came in and Dante created the uh, created the mismatch and then it was uh, it was Suteni untouched under the sticks almost and that's the best of La Rochelle isn't it we saw the initial break from Bryce Doolan out here on the left hand side and then punishing carry after punishing carry both their wingers and Lades and Rule coming in helping the forwards out but it is Bougarit it is Skelton it is Antonio carry after carry when they got their advantage Leinster splintered they could have gone around them they ended up going through them with Suteni, a stroll in, 23-14, Leinster, right on half time, exactly what La Rochelle needed. Yeah, and I'm anxiously looking to see if James Ryans is going to return because he's such a big player for Leinster, if not, if not their most important player, certainly in the form of his life at the moment. Yeah, I but, didn't, uh, didn't I quite. See yeah, him. I didn't quite get a time when he went off for his HA, but it's been pretty close, ominously near 10, hasn't it, Dennis? Yeah. yeah. Now, if you're La Rochelle with 40 seconds left, I think you just try to get into the shed because when it was, what, 17 nil, it looked like curtains for La Rochelle. They've recovered and they are looking for half time. There's still 30 seconds and most referees will be on the case of anyone trying to kill the clock. Jaco Pipe will be no exception. And Kerr Barlow realizes that and gets in a box kick that he's not really got hold of, but La Rochelle have got their hands on it. And they might look to play here. They've got numbers. They've got numbers. Huge numbers. Huge numbers to the right. Hastoy oh. kicks. He shouldn't have done. I think that's the uh, the young man thinking, let's get to half time. Burn will then clear down the lines. And I reckon with time up, Doolan will kick for himself. Bougari, I think, was pointing and saying, get the ball off the pitch. Lowe then loses it. Oh, oh. That's a couple okay. of knocks there. That will be oh, half time. Such an interesting moment there. Paul Grayson and Dennis Hickey because 
La Rochelle will probably feel all right with life. 23-14 at half time. But there were numbers to go that could have made it even better. On the balance of play, Paul Grayson first. How do you see it after that magnificent first 40? Such was the quality of the opening blitz from Leinster. The game almost looked out of La Rochelle's reach, but they've worked their way slowly and steadily back into it. They've had to they've had to bite their lip with the referee. They've got on the wrong side of him, but that Levanne Bocci turnover that led to uh, their second try, getting them back to 14 points on the board. Psychologically, that's a, a good hit for them. And if James Ryan doesn't come back on, unfortunate as it might be for him, mm. they're the sort of just a little bit of psychological fuel that you need when you're behind on the scoreboard. For sure. And you, you know for sure they were, they've been targeting him as a key player, as I said. They've been absolutely blitzing him at every, at every ruck. I actually think he got, I think he picked up a knock tackling uh, or clearing out rather than actually getting hit there themselves. But, you know, he, he's their captain. He's a talisman. He's having an incredible season. And you can be sure the build-up to this match, they were saying, we've got to target him, we've got to target Van der Flair, got to keep them out of the game. So they'll look up and get a real bump for this. And also, they're coming back. If there's a bit of wind out there, and it's going to be behind La Rochelle in that second half. And uh, that's going to be critical, because Lentz are going to carry the ball more. Right, what a second half we've got in store. The statistician that is Russ Petty, the best statistician in the rugby game, he has pointed out that that is the highest scoring first half of a Champions Cup final in history beating the previous best which was 33 points in 2020 which uh which was when i think uh well i know exeter beat racing 92 and i'll quickly try and <laughs> talk, talk you through it sheehan's try and burns conversion the quickest ever try in champions cup final history so records being smashed everywhere sheehan for seven nil jimmy o'brien and then sheehan again made it 70 nil for leinster as they played rugby from the heavens Dante hit back for La Rochelle to take it to 17-7. A couple of burn penalties to 23-7. Then a few minutes from the break, UJ Suteni scored, converted by Hastoy, 23-14. Do not go anywhere. It is going to be some second half. La Rochelle are looking to go back to back, only Toulouse and Toulon have done that ever. And Leinster are trying to do what only Toulouse have done, which win a fifth Champions Cup title. Some second half on the way. Half time, it's Leinster 23, La Rochelle 14. But we're going to take a minute and reflect on last night's events in this very stadium in the Challenge Cup final. It wasn't the great competitive match we all hoped between Glasgow and Toulon. Toulon much too strong. They outclassed the Warriors. Toulon giving Sergio Prise a dream send off. So plenty to discuss for Andy Burke and Tom English who chatted after the game on the BBC Scotland Rugby podcast. It's great that they got to the final, but they never bothered to turn up for the final. Uh, everything about the performance was, was terrible. They were up against a class team. And maybe even Glasgow's best, best on the night wouldn't have been good enough. But we will never know that because they were so far off their best. Uh, they were a mile off it. Uh, in everything they did, their defence was awful, their line-out at critical times was awful, the, the team selection, and we've talked about that, um, the physicality, poor, uh, lack of composure, lack of accuracy, when they, when they had so much field position in the first half, so much, so many opportunities, and at the start of the second half, they coughed it up, coughed it up, coughed it up, soft touches. And they said, you know, we, they wanted to they wanted to leave the pitch, win or lose, without having any regrets that they gave it their best shot. They didn't even come remotely close to giving it their best shot. And that's the thing, these players will have regrets because these opportunities, these finals, these European finals, yeah. history demonstrates for Scottish sides, they do not come along very often. They don't, they don't, you know, and they've, you know, they've worked really, really hard and very impressively to get here. And we all know how hard it is. Those guys know better than any of us. Uh, but they didn't perform. And this is, you know, when you get to a final, if you lose and you play well, you just lose to a better side, but you play well, and you take it to the wire, and you're just beat them on the, on the day by a better side, that's painful. But you can deal with it because you have delivered a performance. They've delivered, they've delivered nothing. They've let themselves down awfully. And I know, like, I'm getting stuck into them here because I think they're way better than that. Way better than that. Yeah. Too, long, too long, fair play to them. Parise, outstanding. I mean, just what well, a He wrote his own colossus. ending, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What a, what a colossus. And they were, they're, they're an excellent team, you know. And it just shows you, what, what are they doing in eighth place in the top four yeah. team, you know. Uh, they had injuries all the way through. 
uh, but they were they were so up for this and they looked right from the get go they looked like grabbing this game by the scruff of its neck and that's what they did and I just I'm stre- I just think Glasgow's performance they'll take a they'll take a while to get over this because they will have a world of regrets over it. Yeah, Peter, right, this was not the Glasgow Warriors we have come to know and admire so much this season. Everything that makes them and it has made them such an effective team over the course of the season, it all just melted away tonight. Yeah, and, and the big concern is that, that the players, I, mean, I don't care what the fans of that think, but the players hang a lot on this last game. You know, they, they played, a, they had a great season, they played some great rugby after a very very poor start but they, they came they came through and performed got themselves to the final and I, th- I think the most disappointing thing for me is that they Toulon were never under any pressure at any time so we don't know how Toulon would have reacted if they were 21 nil down or 7 nil down or 14 nil down because they never never had to put them under and that'll be what hurts the coaching staff in particular that we never Glasgow never tested too long when the game was still equal you know it was it was 21 nil after however many minutes and that the game was pretty much stone dead teams like Toulon don't lose games after being 21 nil down and you know it can go one of two ways they can well they can wallow in self-pity the, the play, I don't think they will because I don't think Franco Smith will let them and I don't think that's the attitude of these players now I think maybe if, if Danny Wilson was still being involved maybe they would have but I think there's a there's enough guts and determination in that team to get better and they have to get better because it's the the basics that hurt and, and you know it's interesting why you know New Zealand are the most consistent team any any sports team in the world uh, for the last hundred years and the reason is they do the basics way better than anybody else they don't they don't always do that much stuff that's magic but they just do the basic things so if you can't get that right if you can't get your throwing right if you can't get your lifting and jumping right if you can't catch a ball after a kickoff and each time you can see the try in those occasions you know you, you're never going to win games so you, you got to get those basic bits right and the quality players as Glasgow team they have to learn because they have to be better next season um, obviously a lot of these guys will go forward now into the World Cup uh, and, and that's you know another opportunity to learn to get better and then play in high profile pressure games um, the downside is that uh, certainly two of those games in the World Cup are pressure, I mean way more pressure than this game um, so you just got to hope that the Glasgow guys involved in those games perform a damn sight better than they perform tonight It's, uh, I, I think they'll, they'll be crushed, they'll be absolutely crushed uh, their performance was was really substandard and all the things that we were hearing about you know, they're going to keep a check on their emotions they don't want to overhype it they're going to turn up uh, and play Played a match, not the occasion. A lot of things went went awfully wrong for them today. See, think, and, and every, every every facet of their game collapsed, really. Sorry, Tom. I think one of Scotland's strengths is is using the emotion. It is actually hyping it up and, and going for it. I remember we went, uh, when Telford was coaching us, we, we went for a Grand Slam game against England, and he done exactly the same thing. He wouldn't let us talk about Grand Slams. He wouldn't let us... You know, even though let's get excited about the game, we still have to keep our feet on the ground. And we ultimately we didn't perform we went out against England and they just smothered us to death. And you know, our argument with Jim after that was well, you know, if you'd actually let us just go a bit nuts with passion and what we're you know, what Scotland's very good at, I think sometimes we, we forget that's a massive strength for Scottish teams and it's not a bad thing sometimes to use that. There was a lot of neutrals round about us, Tom, Irish locals and they were kind of rooting for Glasgow as much as anything, rooting for them to make a game of it. Yeah, they, they, they want, just wanted a contest. They wanted a contest. They wanted a cliffhanger, and it was all very one-sided. And you know, okay, Glasgow. They, when the game was long gone, they scored a couple of tries. But when they scored one, too long scored one. You know, so it was, uh, well, the first try they get, uh, was it the first or second try they get? Two Pilotto drops the ball immediately from the yeah, restart. That's right. Right. Just that's summed right, up yeah. their night. S- summed up, summed their night. Everything went wrong. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just, just a crushing disappointment that that they didn't didn't deliver anything anything close to their best. They needed to be uh, uh, too long, and too long really from the start. And and you look at uh, too long celebrating it. This is a this is a huge huge thing for them. A massive thing for them. All sorts of emotion. 
uh, I thought their performance all day was 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 emotion. You know, it was controlled emotion, but it was fury, a fury in it. And I don't think Glasgow ever got up to the pitch of that uh, pitch of the game in that kind of emotional way. That that control, you need that control, right? He's, he's absolutely spot on. You need it for a final. And it just Glasgow seemed to be passive from the start. It was weird. And we said um, that half time and worth reiterating, we have given Franco Smith a huge amount of praise this season. He has done a remarkable job. Um, but his big calls blew up in his face tonight. Yeah, and I don't know what, it was Richie Gray just not fit enough. Uh, bringing him on when he brought him on. I mean, this, this game was gone. Uh, Darge, Matthews. This, look, Gray was, Gray was the one, really. Because he's your line-out man. He is one of the best line-out forwards in the game today. So clever, so big, uh, such a huge target. And that's where it started to collapse and go wrong for, for Glasgow. It was, it was out of touch. That's when the rot started to set in. If Gray was there, presuming if, if, he, was, if he was fit to start the game, I don't know why he, start, he, why he didn't start the game. But he was a massive, massive miss. And it's just, I find it hard to fathom why he didn't start. Tom English and before Tom, Andy Burke on the BBC Scotland Rugby podcast, picking through the bones of a desperately disappointing evening for the Glasgow Warriors, losing the Challenge Cup final to Toulon, who gave Sergio Parise a dream send-off the great Italian in quite probably his last game of competitive rugby, unless he features in the top 14 uh, next weekend. Well, if that one was not as compelling as we hoped, this one certainly has been. Half-time in the Champions Cup final, Leinster 23, La Rochelle 14, and we're a matter of minutes away from getting going again. We're seeing pictures of the Leinster huddle. Dennis Hickey, you know, proud man of Leinster, played many times in that royal blue. What are the main messages do you think from Leo Cullen and Stuart Lancaster and then Paul Grayson will ask you what La Rochelle needs to do better in the second half? I think, uh, first, I think they need to have the same sort of level of, of, of bravery and inventiveness in this half, because that's what took them into that lead. Um, for sure, they're under pressure up front. You know, when, when La Rochelle get, get it with inside their 22, scrum, line out, it's, uh, they can, they, they're causing Leicester a lot of problems. And even though 23-14, I kind of finished that half feeling Leicester were really were under the pump. James Ryan looks like he's not going to be coming back on. Again, a big blow for them. So how do they regroup that? And they just have to stick to their game and make sure that they make, uh, make every opportunity count. They will create opportunities and the key to them as ever is getting that, that quick ball. So, you know, having the same level of bravery and get the execution right for sure. And Paul Grayson, La Rochelle, who got that Sutenit try near the end of the half to take it to, what, a nine-point game? Yeah, and, you know, the, in, the, in the opening part of the game, Better play to Leinster. La Rochelle just had their pants pulled down. There were, there were a couple of early plays, early blitz, and then they played too much, too deep, with Leinster going so hard at the breakdown, they couldn't get out of their own half. So they were inviting extra pressure. Once they got out of their own half, uh, and, and as Dennis has put the squeeze on up front, you could see that their power is going to be a factor in this game. And then a sustained period of attack where they hit you hard, hit you hard, hit you hard, and then move it to the to the pace is irresistible when they get the right people on the ball so I would say if they have got a breeze favouring in this half yes they're 23-14 down but they've only got to be one point in front at the end of the game so they've got to work harder on getting field position so they can make that power differential count from the right point of the field yeah and remember La Rochelle have, have, have gone for the, the forward split so they've got you know they've, they've got a whole new front five to bring on and that's really what not what squeezed Leinster last year. Leinster just ran out of ran out of beef. They just didn't have enough. Let's just bench maybe a bit stronger this year than it was last year. But they've already used up one of their uh, their cards because uh, uh, Jason Jenkins is on. It looks, looks like he's as I said, James Ryan is not coming back on because he the teams come out uh, and, and there's no sign of him. So that's going to be a big factor in that last ten minutes. And you know it's 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 uh, 23 14. It doesn't take that long to. <laughs> to pull that back and uh, this, if any team can do it La Rochelle the bit of breeze behind them they're going to kick off Leinster have got the first thing they've got to do is make sure they don't spend the next 10 minutes you know of this opening exchanges in and around their own half in penalty zone yeah thanks for mentioning the La Rochelle bench really important point Dennis six forwards and two backs but we saw in the semi-final with Toulouse if you get that wrong that bench split you can 
almost concede the game, but if you get it right, you can bring a whole new forward pack on. Yeah, but they, they start with eight forwards and Lovane at True. seven. True. Is a, is, he can be a back, yeah. a little bit like French. France plays Sekou Makulu uh, on the wing because he's got jet shoes, the back rower, so it's not as much of a gamble as perhaps it was for, uh, for Toulouse. But I think Ronan O'Gara in the middle of that huddle in the changing rooms will have been saying to La Rochelle, enjoy the fear coming for Leinster. We're their bogey team. 23-14, 40 minutes left in the Champions Cup final. Leinster 14 minutes away from that coveted fifth star on their chest. A fifth Champions Cup, only the great Toulouse side has done that before. But La Rochelle are in their third straight final and they know what it takes to win the big one. Gibson Park clears his lines for the restart. Taken in by Hastoy, you know, then by uh, Brice Doulan to Aldrit. Hastoy is on his right, not, not used. Set up by Aldrit. Kerr Barlow on the halfway line. Looks to the left but goes to the right. No, back to the left he goes to Doulan. To Rule, who's failed on halfway. Over on the far touchline from where we are. Five metres in from touch. Roman Sarzi, the 36-year-old. 13 years at La Rochelle. Dropped by Hastoy, who's under pressure and is... Scragged by Conan, and then he gets to his feet, told to release by referee Piper. Here goes Aldrich by himself, but he's so powerful and strong, and then he straightens up. So oh. powerful, just swatting the Leinster players away. Ball popped out, he wasn't expecting it. He was able to ride two tackles and still get in a position to be able to give a clean ball back for, for La Rochelle. Skelton got the offload to Antonio Bougari from Dante's pass. Not going to the boot, interestingly, La Rochelle, who trailed by nine in the cup final. Leinster 23, La as I say that, La Rochelle do kick, Lowe's under it, he's taken man and ball but has it cleanly, Rule was in his face. Leinster 23, La Rochelle 14, 90 seconds into the second half, surely the second half won't be played at the same frenetic tempo as the first, as we said just at the start of half time, the most points ever scored, 38, in a Champions Cup final. 37 actually isn't it 23 plus 14 as uh Kerr Barlow scampers over halfway now out to Aldrin out the back it goes Hastoy oh short ball oh! to Suteni who has gone siding through he's one-on-one -on -one with Gibson Park oh he's still oh. going that was magnificent from Suteni who juggled and then cut Leinster to ribbons there might be numbers for La Rochelle Kerr Barlow offside. dummies offside Free ball now for La Rochelle, who are only 15 metres out or so. I thought Suteni was going to go all the way himself. Dylan Lades, he throws a pump and a dummy. Gibson Parks on that ball, that's going to be no advantage. Leinster wanted the turnover, but no advantage. Oh, Suteni, talk us what about that line. one, Dennis Nicky. What, what a line. I almost didn't see it. I actually thought he was going to knock it on. He took it at such an angle. It was the slight juggle from Hastoy that everybody starts watching the ball. It's like the bounce pass. Everyone freezes for a second. Suteni committed to his line, Hastoy managed to get it back under control and just popped it off. Clean break, he thought for all money he was going to beat the last defender and go under the post. Great scramble defence from James Gibson Park, but brilliant start for La Rochelle. The absolute ideal start because they played all the rugby in Leinster's half. Leinster really have just been defending since the ball was kicked off. And um, that little bit of breeze in La Rochelle, you know, that's exactly what they would have talked about at half time. Hastoy can't miss and he won't miss. He pops it over. 23 17. It's a six point ball game. Who would have thought that after 12 minutes? And that, that a bit of patience around the halfway line, but much better accuracy from La Rochelle. They didn't go to the boot straight away, recycled it a couple of times. Skelton brave enough to offload in, the, in a collision to Antonio. And then when they did go to the air, put great pressure on Force Leicester to play out. And a good attack in that middle third and found the gap for Suteni, three extra points. Hugo Keenan saved the day with a tap tackle. Because if Suteni hadn't lost his footing, he'd have been in. He'd have gone all the way himself. He skinned Gibson Park. But Keenan, who is such a great scrambler, isn't he? Leinster might be on that ball from the restart, and they have. They're going to get a penalty here, Leinster. Oh, it's a knock-on only. But it's still a priceless turnover for the men in blue, who will have the scrum just inside the La Rochelle 22. The classic coach killer. You just scored. Let, you've got all the momentum and then you fail to clear from the kickoff. It's just, <laughs> I wonder Ronald Agar is getting greyer by the day when he sees that. It's just it's so difficult for coaches to watch that because teams spend so much time practicing their exits, particularly now. Uh, and Caelan Doris just got in on the ball and just a little bit of uh, little bit of complacency. And this is another big blow. The tight furlong is going off. 
Uh, again, a, a lot of ballast between James Ryan and himself going off at this early stage. They certainly wouldn't have been planning to take him off at this stage. And straight off the bench for Ala Alatoa, first job, scrimmage. He had a, he had a, and he had a tough run of the last in the, in the final last year. You know, he's he's uh, at this level with this sort of opposition in the scrum. It's a, it's a big ask for him. I wonder if Furlong was carrying something coming into the game because he wasn't his usual prominent self in that first 40. Yeah, didn't take part in the captain's run yesterday. Did he not? No, okay. he didn't take part in the captain's run. And, you know, he came off at half time uh, in, in the last match he played. So, Oh, they're going to get a penalty at the scrum, Leinster. So Alan Alato has come in and made a difference straight away. You don't see Lara Shell concede scrum penalties often. Gibson Park's gone scooting down the right touchline. Care Barlow dots it down. Penalty. And this is a fascinating call now. 23-17. You'd think the, the play is to go for goal, but Byrne can take this to five metres and go for broke. Well, this is the, this is the, this is, these are these big decisions you're talking about. They've got to keep being brave because he's having a shot. I don't know. I think that's a little bit of a... I think it's a bit of a reflection of maybe where their mindset is because you know the opening ma opening uh, uh, minutes of the first half they were going to kick for the corner James Ryan no, and maybe Furlong going off they decided to take their points yeah it's it's the psychology of the game as the as the pressure ebbs and flows and the minutes tick and you get closer to the you get close to the prize the consequences of your actions become bigger and bigger multiply the by pressure. the minute oh it's just immense three points at any stage now is feels massive well if they do kick this goal it will nullify that la rochelle attack and penalty from that stunning uj suteni break hastoy kicking the goal so the six point lead will go back out to nine and then with time ticking, we'll have the constant conversation about who's going to score next and how significant that score could be. Six minutes into the second half, Leinster 23, La Rochelle 17, Ross Byrne 15 metres in from, touch, from the touchline. Just outside the 22 as the Aviva Stadium goes respectfully quiet. Up steps Byrne, he likes it, he's walking away. And the Leinster fans to our left are on their feet, flying their blue flags, 26-17. It's not a pretty ball flight from Ross Byrne. Hits the ball quite low, hits it with a little bit of a draw. It's not no towering efforts, but he's getting the ball between the posts. That is the most important thing, vital for his team. That when asked to step up, he can do it. La Rochelle restart. Jack Conan is under it. And he sets it up just Stop short it. of the 22. Taken back. Taken, taken back, back in, in is the call from referee Piper, which means that Gibson Park can't go for touch instead he's got to keep this in field it's definitely going to be Gibson Park there's not another option for a kicker and it is Gibson Park oh he's, he's put it out hasn't he so he didn't listen to Jaco Piper I mean oh I'm, I'm not 100% sure he was trying to put it out he struck it magnificently maybe there is that little bit of breeze has just dragged it a meter or so to the right and taken it into touch if not, that's a massive error. Dennis, it's given La Rochelle a line out inside the length of 22. Yeah, it's an error one way or the other. Either he didn't know and he, it was a fantastic kick that he shouldn't have kicked, or he did know. And considering, you know, we could, we could certainly pick it up pretty clearly on the ref mic. Um, it, it was a poor, poorly executed kick. And not not, a, not what, what, where Leinster wanted to be. And here comes the, here comes the mall in, in yellow. Yeah, they have won the line out and they've got a decent looking mall starting to roll. Bougari makes it available though to Kerr Barlow and then Dante who just thunders into the Leinster midfield. There for Kerr Barlow, Bottia comes around the corner. The collisions are wince inducing. What a, what a hit. Penalty though to La Rochelle. Was that Robbie Henshaw? Huge hit from Henshaw. Let's have a listen in. Yeah, hands on the floor. And then as he counter he put his hands on the floor. And I imagine Astoy kicks the goal, does he, Paul Grayson? Without question. Yep, he's called for it. Without question. A, a good Can initial it? maul, and then the defence of the maul was, was great. The times, and then they hit it with Dante. Levani Bottier came that's round that's the corner. Right. Sheehan and Henshaw waiting for him, absolutely levelled him. Yeah. Robbie Henshaw almost back to his feet, but still had one hand on the ground. He can't go forward, he played the nine. Decent call from the referee. That decision making, though, Dennis, yeah. under pressure, he'd done the hard bit. Where did it come from? It all comes from, all came from that that, that mistake from Jameson Gibson Park. 
Well, that's, that's the cost that you pay in, in these games. You have to pay a big price for these sort of mistakes. Hastoy from bang in front, he nails it. Well, we're at the stage, aren't we, of the European season, the Champions Cup season, with 30 minutes to go, 26 points to 20, and every single little decision, whether by a player or an official, we will be scrutinising because every single little play could be significant in the destiny of the 2023 Champions Cup. Lens to 26, Larachal 20 as Byrne kicks off. And Doolan and Aldrin almost got in each other's way and then it's a good clearance from Doolan Over, up to halfway. Over call from the full back there, it was a pretty similar kick, not a great strike again from Byrne. A little bit of a helicopter spin on it, but Doolan came in, pushed Aldrin out the way, took the catch and then belted it. Yeah. down the left-hand touchline. But I'll tell you what, Le Leinster have got to, they've got to pick the game up, they've got to speed it up, they've got to get their plays together. They're not really putting La Rochelle under a lot of pressure at the moment, and they haven't in this half, save for that one, one that penalty opportunity they've got. They haven't actually taken La Rochelle through phases, and that's what they need to do. Absolutely, we've not seen the Leinster flow for 10 minutes. They don't want to play from their own oh. half. Oh, he's been charged down, Burn, and Sarsi is onto it, not quite. And then Leinster have bundled out of play, but there was a knock on first. If Sarsi had got that, he wouldn't have been in, but he'd have been able to have La Rochelle ball on Leinster's own 22. Rossburn charged down, and this is where the nerves can start to sink in, however good you are. And as accurate as uh, Leinster were in that opening quarter, no lack of accuracy in what they did there, but an easy read for La Rochelle. They could afford to go flying out of the blocks once the ball came off the top of the line out, went all the way back to Burn, 20 yards back for the clearance. Diving charge down from the La Rochelle player, and you can feel the dynamic change in the stadium, can't you? Can. Nervous energy all around. Leinster supporters really being hushed by by uh, the pressure that La Rochelle and, and the confidence that La Rochelle are all of a sudden bring into the game. Oh, big call here! They've decided the Sarsi didn't knock it on; it was off the head. So it's going to be a La Rochelle line out. They're only 22 meters Whoa. out. It's another big moment. We're going to say this. For the next 30 minutes, big, big moments, small in isolation, but all adding up to the bigger picture. Last one of these led, they played two phases away from the line out and won a penalty in midfield. They'd be happy to do that again. Skelton is lifted at the front. It must take some strength to lift a man of that size. Bougarry has it at the back of the La Rochelle Mall, which is moving forward ominously for Leinster. Into the 22 it goes. Leinster players have to rejoin the mall at the back, then they pile in, it's gone to ground, so who comes away with it? None other than Gregory Aldrete, six points in it, 51 minutes gone, Botti is playing at dummy half rugby league style. La Rochelle might just try and bludgeon Leinster to death here. Care Barlow, slow ball, but that's kind of how La Rochelle might like Numbers. it. Aldrete out to Jonathan Dante to within 10. Robbie Henschel's trying to get on that ball, he has got on that ball. What a turnover, it's Dan Sheehan. I think it's Sheehan, whoever it is, has made an incredibly significant intervention as La Rochelle were lurking just six metres out from the Leinster line. Referee Piper let the, the ball play and Gibson Park gets it away. That's a good clearance from Gibson what Park. Brilliant clearance from Gibson Park, almost up to halfway. Well, they've let it bounce for some reason. Ball tight to the touchline. They went back down the blind side. Dante showed and James, it was Sheehan. Sheehan. Where Sheehan is low to the ground there. He's just surfed his way in as the tackle's taking place. So hard to shift once he's on the ball. And Gibson's park kick. I think it landed about a foot in play. Doolan, no interest, just let it bounce and it went out. Huge moment. Fine margins. Sheehan took a gamble, a bit like Old Reed in the first half. Referee happy. And now Laros will have to play from halfway. Hastoy to Bottier. Bottier into Henschel. Henschel's putting his body on the line, isn't he? What a player Robbie Henschel is. Suteni, Skelton, Aldred as La Rochelle starts to come in waves of yellow. But Leinster's defence, they are emptying the tank, the last game of their season, and they want to end it with the biggest prize in Club Rugby Union. Over the 10 metre line, truck La Rochelle. Kerr Barlow out to Raymond Rule, wide ball from Rule to the blind side, Budahont, who is held up and bundled into touch. No, not quite. The ball shoots out, still with La Rochelle. And Hastoy's jinking. But Leinster have managed to right. repel La Rochelle time and again. 
Kerbalo on the 10 meter line. Antonio's the pivot. Little chip ahead from Hastoy, uh, from Dulan. This might work for him. No. Cleared up in the backfield by Robbie Henshaw. Botti was on that ball, but not able to force a turnover. 53 minutes gone in Dublin. Five live sports extra from the BBC. Live Champions Cup final. Leinster 26, La Rochelle 20. Smash downfield by Ross Byrne. Hastoy in the backfield scoots round. This is fantastic play, fantastic play from, from, from Leinster defensively, but you can't keep defending like this all game. The, 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 the weight of the, of the impacts, the, the, the energy that's being zapped at the moment. And last year's final, Leinster made over 200 tackles to La Rochelle's 80-something. And we're seeing a repeat of that in the second half. And again, Leinster clear their lines, but oh. they need to attack. Well, you say cleared their lines, Dennis, oh. but it was passed back in. James Keenan Rowe. came up with a brilliant take to get possession back for Leinster, but they're starting to make mistakes, the men in blue. 22 line out La Rochelle. They eventually got James Lowe into position to clear their lines, passed it back into 22. He went for an absolute rocket launcher, just came off the side of his boot and went into touch. They're adding pressure to themselves. The point Dennis makes about how hard they're having to hit these massive men from La Rochelle. They're having to double tackle every time and they're having to be 100% hit every time just to stop the La Rochelle momentum. There's only so often you're going to get that right. Listen to the noise. The La Rochelle flag, uh, flags are, are flying from their fans jubilantly. They trail by six, but you can feel the energy shift in this place. Magnificent atmosphere on Lansdowne Road. As Kerr Barlow finds Levani Bottier to Jonathan Dante, big man to big man. Power carriers making dents. Here's Suteni, who's just magnificent this afternoon. He sets it up. Kerr Barlow goes to the left. Red Awardy drives on. A man's down in centre Henshaw. field. Robbie Henshaw. So they're a man light, but Henshaw's back on his feet. He is emptying the tank. Turned over. And now Lowe has just got to smash it, but he sliced it again. I don't think it was passed back inside, so it won't be a big territorial uh, was... concession from Lowe, but it will be a line out to La Rochelle. What's that? 26, 27 metres out. He was in two minds there. He was going to run, and then he realised he got a kick. There was too many of his team were in front of him, and uh, it just came off his boot. Again, it's just the adrenaline, the energy. And uh, Robbie Henshaw taken also is going to be going off for HIA, I suspect. He took a, bit, a, a heavy hit on Gregory Aldred, I think it was. No. Will Skelton too picking up a knock. So physical this game. It's crazy physical. It was the rip from Van der Fleer we're seeing on the replay. Big play from the World Player of the Year. The kind of play that wins Champions Cups when the margins are this fine. Yeah, and as Old Root was going down, the referee didn't call uh, tackle, so he's quite within his rights to carry on with his attempt to strip the ball, Van der Fleer. And then James Lowe has another opportunity to. I think that I think the smart play was hit down the channel, keep it on the field, and try and forced La Rochelle to have to retreat scramble into their own 22 maybe that was in his mind uh, but he skewed it again but what what about though the um, the backfield play from the La Rochelle uh, back three because Leinster just cannot find any space they can't find anywhere Leinster can't find anywhere to kick the ball that there isn't a La Rochelle cover and any sign of relief they're trying to get they're trying to kick kicks that are just hard to hard to execute yeah Brice Doolan who, who is sometimes a bit erratic in a France shirt is He's just a, a, a sensational player for La Rochelle. He's, didn't he do a kick in the final last year that, that changed everything? He reads the game very well. He, he's, a, he's a calculated gambler, Brice Doulan, and he's, he's a vital player for, for La Rochelle and for France. It's, it was his little chip over the top. In, it, it didn't quite come off for La Rochelle. It maintained the pressure on Leinster, but they do have to keep looking into the backfield because they're bending Leinster's back three out of shape. There is opportunity in an attacking sense to stick the ball in behind and put and apply extra pressure. I think uh, we, we can hear the um, we can hear the Leinster crowd giving uh, Will Skelton the bird a bit. He's getting been on the long. He's been getting a lot of treatment for a long time. But but I think the Leinster players be more than happy to take a breather. If anyone uh, would want to keep the game going quickly at the moment, it's La Rochelle. A uh, bit of a breather for both sides. But well. Dennis Skelton had Brice Doolan, Winnie Antonio and Levani Bottia and now Dylan Lades all coming over to him and saying basically come on mate we need you and even if he's playing a bit gingerly looks like he's hurt his lower leg Skelton 
His size and influence is massive, even if half fit. Bougarie throws, taken in the line up by La Rochelle at go. the front, yep. and they go to them all again. 26 points to 20, 55 minutes on the clock, on a knife edge in Dublin as La Rochelle motor on. What a maul this is. Bougarie drives another 10 metres. They're deep in the 22 now. And the Leinster bodies are all over the place. Sapping Can they the keep energy. driving? He'll sap the energy out of Leinster, but they've got it to ground. They'll get a scrum, Leinster. Wow. They conceded about 15 metres. Gregory Aldrich livid, as is Bottier. But it's going to be a scrum, Leinster, and the blue flags fly. I think it's Andrew Porter got in there. And it's heroic stuff, but you just can't keep doing it. You, like Leinster haven't put, La Rochelle haven't had to defend in the second half. Every bit of rugby we're seeing has been down that horseshoe end and uh, it's going to take its toll. So it's fantastic. It's, 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 it's sort of heroics you, you'd expect from a, a champion team like Leinster, particularly with the players they have. But uh, they're going to have to, they're going to have to be able to counter punch soon. Yeah, they need heroes down the other end of the pitch, don't they? For sure. Yeah, it is shade to Marseille, Dennis. You pointed out the tackle count last year. The dam eventually burst, didn't it? Leinster just soaked up so much pressure in the final 10, 15 minutes. But the La Rochelle power game, they're close to the most powerful team we've ever seen in this sport. It's so big. And they've got two guys about to come out on the pitch that look even bigger than the guys are going to go off if that's possible. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Joel <laughs> Slavi, the Argentinian, and George Henri Colom both ready to come on. But that would mean the end of Weenie Antonio and uh, Red Awardy, so maybe Leinster will be pleased to see the back of a man like Antonio. Scrum Leinster, deep inside their own 22, massive scrum as we tick towards the hour mark on Sports Extra. Referee Piper wants a reset. Oh, this is dangerous territory for Leinster because for sure they're under the cosh. You need to get the rock solid, get the ball in, get the ball out. Yeah, if you're La Rochelle, Paul Grayson, you've got to do all you can to just not give a penalty away, to keep the pressure on Leinster. And if you're Leinster, you just want to relieve it, don't you? A free kick or a penalty. Yeah, it's an, an unstable scrum is the last thing you want here from Leinster. It needs to last no more than two or three seconds in. Channel one. Keep the pressure. Pick up and get away. And the thing is, this is this is bread and butter for French teams. This goes on every week in the in, in the league. They're perfectly happy doing this. Just staying this to the end of the pitch. Scrum reset. Bring on these big guys for the next one probably. Get a fresh set of legs and and uh, Michael Al Alto is going to earn his money here. Oh, very quick heel. Nicely done by Leinster. They peel away through Conan. That was the quickest heel and pick up you'll ever, ever see. see. They're starting to feel the pinch up front and there are still 21 minutes left. No, no, if Leinster are going to do this and get that fifth star above their chest to signify five Champions Cups, they will be going to the well, as you would expect in the Champions Cup final. Oh. Lades out to Doolan, he's got a little bit of space, he's almost got through to spare in tackle. I think it was Alain Latour, the replacement tight head. Gregory Aldrit, as is so often his want, he picks and goes. Slap, bang in centre field for Kerr Barlow, who comes to the right and Skelton. Out the back to Hastoy, then Laid, Dante drops it. Oh, and Laid, numbers. livid. He knew there may have been an opportunity down the right. Scrum Leinster on their own 22. Laid's got to make his mind up, do one thing or the other. He uh, almost dummied his own player there. He half fainted to run himself. Dante, Dante changed his line and then he chucked it at him. Not right. ideal. But that... Um, using Skelton as a pivot because you've got to load up two defenders on him massive human being still has the skills and the awareness to be able to pull the ball out the back created a little bit of space down the uh, down the short side well changes are plenty and Weenie Antonio and Red Award but probably more for Antonio given his his age and uh, and profile he, the, the two props are up for Larashal and a change also. Jack Conan. Jack Conan. So that's going to be. Ryan Baird will be on. And then uh, Kalen Doris to. Number eight. To eight, yeah. Yeah, like I, I have to say, I think Kalen Doris, you know, he can play six and eight, but I think any team that doesn't have him play in an eight, they suffer a little bit because he's so good with the ball in hand. He just doesn't get a chance to have his ball in, ha ball in hand as much when he's at, uh, when he's at, at six. But. I tell you what, he's going to earn his spurs here because he's going to be taking the ball out of a, a very quick scrum, uh, I'd say, for the next uh, 20 minutes. Hour gone in Dublin. Champions Cup oh. final rugby on the BBC. Leinster 26, La Rochelle 20. But La Rochelle are putting 
an enormous amount of pressure on Leinster, who at one point led 17-0 and everything was, was rosy. Now the gap is six and they are under the cosh. Gibson Park, good clearance, Great keeps kick. it in field, but with plenty of distance. Under it is Doolan. He's not got much sports to the left, so he goes right to Dillian Lades. Over halfway skips the South African. He sets it up. Well, straight through came Jason Jenkins, but the referee was happy. Therefore, Georges Henri Colomb, who sets it up, just bustling over halfway, the big prop. Pastoy into centre field. Dante takes a couple of Leinstermen with him. They're working hard on the floor there, Leinster, and they've got a turnover. Yes, they have. They need to get a bit of territory. Gary Ringrose, he He's comes away own, with it. He's a, on bit, his own. a bit He's isolated, and La Rochelle are on that ball, surely now. No, the referee was happy with the Leinster turnover, but not the La Rochelle one. Back to Byrne, who kicks, and he finds some grass. Good kick, Ross Byrne, but... As ever, Bruce Doolan is extremely well positioned and he gets a long, raking left-footed clearance up to halfway, probably just about on us even in the kick of battle. Oh, this is the first time we've seen Leinster anywhere near... I was going to say in the La Rochelle half, but they're not quite in the La Rochelle half. But this has really taken their toll on them. But it's an incredible piece of defensive uh, play there by Leinster to, to sustain the, that level of pressure for that long. Amazing not to concede anything um, in that period. Some high quality number eight play from Doris there to get away under real pressure from Lavani Bottier who's that taking the knee I have a feeling it's Robbie Henshaw yeah Robbie Henshaw coming off Charlie Natai coming on yeah he's been in great form Charlie Natai you know he, he missed a large chunk of the season and he came back and played the semi-final uh, 60 minutes after not having played since Christmas had a really strong game he's one of the one of the players he put it himself very well last week uh, against Munster in a team in a, in a team maybe not a first starters but he had a strong so he's a very experienced um, player to be bringing in obviously played his rugby in France last year would know these La Rochelle guys well but now what can Leinster do on the counter attack can they counter punch can they deliver a blow where La Rochelle have been attacking 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 and find themselves conceding some points that's what they need to do this is a critical critical junction in the game Who's going to blink first? Who is going to score next? Into the final 20 minutes of the Champions Cup final. Baird at the front of the lineup for Leinster, who finally have a chance to go through some phases. And own. Caelan Doris storms over halfway. Slightly scrappy for Gibson Park, who then sends a towering kick, putting pressure on Rule. Real tester for Rule. He's lost it, and Jimmy O'Brien's onto it, but it's a penalty to La Rochelle. Was Rule taken out in the air? Was there crossing? Either way, that could have been huge if Leinster regained it. But anything they did do to win the battle in the air, illegal according to referee Piper, La Rochelle penalty, Hastor will belt it up to the halfway. Oh, and here we go, back again. <laughs> back again. <laughs> well, they, 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 they might not have had the rubber of the green with the referee in the first half. La Rochelle. I don't, I'm looking at the ball, Yeah, watching the replay, it's a fair challenge in the air. The ball went loose and backwards. I don't uh, know how that's a penalty. Yeah, not so sure myself. It all works itself out in the end, though, Dennis. <laughs> you hope, yeah, don't well, you? Well, I suppose we, we were also shaking our head when, when uh, Carbarlo got set, got a yellow card for what seemed like a, a very harsh decision. So, yeah, these things swings and roundabouts. Dante sets it up, 10 metre line after a good La Rochelle line out. Here goes Skelton. The bane of Leinster, the bane of pretty much every opposition in Europe. Nice ball from Aldry, oh, this is good. Suteni, Raymond Rule, almost up to the 22. La Rochelle starting to throw some shape at Leinster in attack. Colom helps out Aldrit. 22 line, it's still only six points in it. Good tip on oh. from Bottia, lovely hands. Can Skelton get it away? Not quite. He's tackled to the ground by James Lowe good just hit, about. Lowe. And then Nartai comes pouring forward and over the top and wins the ball back for Leinster the rucks like the Wild West it's Leinster possession but they're inside their own half just outside their own 22 there for Gibson Park back to Nartai who's going to kick and he just lamps it to the relief of almost 50,000 here minus the few thousand from La Rochelle Doolan looking for a 50-22 he's got so much space he perhaps should have executed better the right winger O'Brien was up Gibson Park tries a banana kick, one Martin Hernandez style. It will be a line out to La Rochelle <laughs> in between the 22 and the 10 metre line. Paul Grayson. Yeah, that was one of those tiny weeny bananas that you see in the supermarket. I'm not buying that. Just smash it down the field, mate, in a straight line. Anyway, 
but you're right, it was on there, 50-22 for Doolan on the counter-attack. He saw it, couldn't quite execute. Next best thing, poor kick from Gibson Park. Another chance for La Rochelle. You've got to think, they're getting on for 15 minutes to go. They've had all the play in the second half, all the pressure. They need something for it now. Listen to the noise in the Aviva Stadium. La Rochelle fans in magnificent voice. Leinster fans trying to urge their team over the finishing line. The trophy that's eluded them for five years since Bill Bow in 2018. Down by goal. But this La Rochelle Mall is getting so much change. Oh, they've been done for crossing. They didn't have two men in the mall. And Greg Aldrete is just beside himself with referee Piper. He feels that Leinster are pulling down the mall. Got to kind of say that La Rochelle have got so much dominance there, they're not getting what you would think they might get out of it. They just they are they are marching forward. He's called the mall down. Well, and then two of them split off to the left. Porter's in the way. Accidental obstruction. I mean, the referee's closer than we are, but when you watch it on the replay, it's hard to say. 50-50 50, 50, 50 call. At least it's not a penalty. It's just a uh, it's just a scrummage. Number six. Change for La Rochelle in the back row. On comes Alton Delan, once of Connacht, Ireland international, 19 Ireland caps. He's on for Paul Bonahon in the on the blind side flank. Yeah, he's he's, he's really uh, re, re, uh, relayed himself over in, in La Rochelle. A long spell with Connacht, you know, was was in and around the the Irish squad during the Joe Schmidt era. Never really got a, a run of caps, or even when he was on the bench, didn't make, you know, didn't get a huge amount of game time. Uh, but he's he's uh, fitted in very well in La Rochelle, and he's he's been a big part of of their success so far this season. In an era where there's so much competition in that back row, yeah. some brilliant yeah. players getting yeah. no caps, no return. So Dennis Icky, how do Leinster start playing in a bit of in La Rochelle's half a bit? I don't know. It's it's very very difficult. That, that bit of breeze uh, certainly isn't helping. The fact that you know the the the, the, the La Rochelle forwards are so dominant. So a lot of the kicks that we've seen from Ross Byrne and from Jameson Gibson Park, they're not from a position of strength. They're snatching at it. They've a lot of pressure. They're trying to be, find some spaces that aren't there. And because the ball is slow when they're getting the ball back, the the, the backfield in, in La Rochelle has time to set and get back. Leinster 26, La Rochelle 20. There are only 14 minutes to go. And the scrum is moving all over oh, the place. We'll have, a, we'll have a reset. Yeah, that's generous from the referee. Everybody's unstable, yes. But it's, it's unstable by about a foot and a half towards the Leinster try line. Which means the big yellow machine that is the La Rochelle pack have really got Leinster under the pump in the scrum so low on this near side Gibson Park almost can't hasn't got the room to get the ball in and you feel as well if La Rochelle La Rochelle to score and yeah, make you know get one point ahead there's nothing in this half we've seen to say that Leinster are going to come back and score a, a try a penalty because they just haven't had any attacking in the, in, in the second half that's the danger isn't it that it feels a bit like last year with La Rochelle delivering the crucial play right at the end but Leinster need to score score again in the game that feels non-negotiable the scrum is splintering all over the place what has happened They've here lost it. I think it's in La Rochelle possession La Rochelle have it so they turned it over at the scrum and Aldrit comes peeling away he's a man possessed Greg Aldrit 22 change at hooker for La Rochelle Skelton is still on though he'll try and go 80 if he can over the ball is Doris but it's a penalty to La Rochelle hands on the floor Kerbalo is sniping he's almost up to the five meter line they've got numbers to the right oh. then they lose it Nartai came in and saved the day but Hastoy will have a kick here to take it to within three points it's Kaelin Doris who thought he'd got a penalty turnover but referee Piper said his hands were on the floor illegally. Hastoy surely kicks this to take the gap mm. to three Paul Grayson. I'm not sure he'd go for a scrum. <laughs> I don't know but there's almost a, there's a blessing and a curse when Will Skelton carries the ball. He's so powerful that he gets over the gain line which sometimes leaves his clearers behind him and gives the opportunity for defenders to get in. This time Doris gets it wrong, thinks he's within his rights to play that ball. And try and affect a turnover as it was for once Piper at the breakdown siding with the French team the penalty be 19 meters out 
directly in line with the right hand no post. Ball. Seems a no brainer to me. Uh, see, Lance will take a penalty. I think, yeah, they're kicking for the corner. I'm not surprised. Oh, they, they, uh, need, they, need to, they need to try. But they they've got time. I, I would have. Oh, goodness me. I would have thought for all the money in the world they would have kicked the goal. His kick's only gone to 10 metres. That's a big call, isn't it? 10 metre line out, La Rochelle ball. They yeah. must feel they've got Leinster at the mall. It's not as straightforward to stick it on the five metre line as you think. Your window is very narrow should you get it wrong uh, and pull it in and lose all your advantage. So a little bit of nervousness for him there, but at least it's their ball, their line out. Les Bjork throws into the line out the replacement hooker. Change for Leinster at hooker, Keller on for Sheehan. La Rochelle with the mall to within 10 metres, pulled down by Leinster. La Rochelle driving up, they're almost at the line now. Leinster are creaking and La Rochelle are ominously close now. Three metres out, knocked on La Rochelle. We're going to go back for the penalty. And this is where, if you're Greg Aldrich, Paul Grayson, you start saying to Piper, card, card, card. They, they, they can't handle our mall. Yeah, we don't want any of the... Uh demonstrative appealing for a yellow card just walk up to the referee and have a quiet word in his ear much more gentlemanly well the, the only thing is yeah Lancer actually haven't been penalized for, for pulling down a lot of balls that, that's as the first one he's got I think that's part of his frustration but you'd, you'd from a Larishelle point of view you'd be saying well they were offside under their post when we made a line yeah. break they've infringed twice now in that red zone inside their own 22 and you've uh, got to think what he did with Gibson Park straight to the bin yeah. with a cynical play so Leinster have got to be on red alert here certainly do they're they're they're, they're uh, fully in the huddle. huddle look they know this they know the game this is the game is here 69 minutes you know if, if La Rochelle were to go over and convert a try here it's going to be a long it's going to be a hard road back for Lester not impossible but it's going to be hard to do they know they've got to hold them out here Pastoy prods it into the corner five meter line out La Rochelle converted try puts them in the lead for the first time in the cup final yeah no question he was going to hit the five meter line he was virtually standing on it thrown into the line out one of the front by the giant skeleton penalty again against Leinster advantage La Rochelle they're up to the line almost Kerr Barlow digging for it Alan Atto is in there on the wrong side they've repelled the drive just about Leinster but it's penalty advantage to the men in yellow they're attacking towards their fans who are congregated behind the posts. Advantage to La Rochelle, who are three or four metres out. They drive on to within two metres. They trail by six. A converted try puts Ronan O'Gara's men in the lead. And are they going to do what they did last year to Leinster? They pick and go through Colomb, the tight head. They couldn't be closer. We're talking inches in Dublin. They go once more, La Rochelle. They're on top of the goal line. Are they held up? Yes, they are. Back for the penalty. And is Jaco Piper going to go to the card? He is. I certainly, he's certainly got to speak to them. He might give them one more shot. It's two different penalties, but it's in the zone. No more at all. Okay. Yeah, no more, he's saying. Gary Ringrose is now captain with Ryan. Well, since Ryan went off just for half time. They had penalty advantage and they tried to carry on. Leinster gave away another penalty, so it was new penalty advantage. He's doubled up. They've got to be better there, La Rochelle. Having said that, if they'd scored, the ideal scenario here is penalty try, man in the bin, if they can get them all going and it has to be collapsed by Leinster. It's a live possibility. And obviously they wouldn't do this, but it's kind of one of those where if you're Leinster, you say, well, if they score in the corner, they've got to kick the goal we get some field position back and we stay with 15. But if Leinster keep trying to spoil, we are talking penalty tries and yellow cards. Taken at the front by Skelton, he barely got off the ground. He's so tall he can just grab it out the Another air. Penalty. They attack down the fringe, La Rochelle. They're almost up to the line. One metre short, La Rochelle. We'll be with our five live listeners for an update any moment now. Six points in it, Leinster 26, La Rochelle 20. They could not be much closer, La Rochelle. A converted try puts them in the lead. Six points in it, two metres out. They dig for the ball. Kerr Barlow, the All Black. He fizzes it out, which juggled by the forwards, but driven on. They're all there. Sklavi, Colomb driving on one meter out La Rochelle they pick and go and I think Leinster are over Steve they may have scored the try La Rochelle and they have scored the try huge moment in the Champions Cup final the La Rochelle flags fly they've scored the try but with the kick to come will put La Rochelle in the lead for the first time in the Champions Cup final the prop 
Cologne has scored with just eight minutes to go. Leinster 26, La Rochelle 25. There's a sin bin happening as well for a Leinster player. And this is turning into a nightmare for Leinster. At one point, they led by 17 points to nil. They were in dreamland. But La Rochelle have completely and utterly dominated this second half. They've scored the try. They've got a man in the sin bin now, Leinster. And with eight minutes to go, Dennis Hickey, this kick from Hastoy will put La Rochelle into a one-point lead. For sure. And, you know, as I said earlier on, we haven't seen Leinster anywhere near the 22, let alone the, the, uh, the La Rochelle line. What a huge kick this is. Huge kick for the fly half. Antoine Hastoy, who's been composed today. Leinster 26, La Rochelle 25. This will put the champions into the lead. And he's nudged it, it's over. Leinster 26, La Rochelle 27. And Leinster will have to try and come back, Steve, with 14 men. What a finish to the Champions Cup final. So our listeners from Five Live joined us at just the right time. Cologne with the try, one point in it, seven minutes to go, Paul Grayson. Great kick from Hastoy, he was on the cross of the 15 and the 22 for his conversion. Nerveless, didn't overhit it to get them back one point in front as they secure the kickoff. Well, the question that Dennis Hickey posed is, have Leinster got anything to show they can work their way in a position to score points? The wind is starting to get up, burn, flips it to O'Brien and there are some tired bodies out there, it's Keenan rather from the backfield. They just haven't been able to work their shape all second half. Porter throws a dummy and drives up to halfway. Gibson Park out to Burn, who belts it skywards. Three Leinster players are rushing up, taken by Doolan. He's sacked by a few Leinstermen. They need the crowd. They need all the support they can get. La Rochelle on their own 22. And this is where Release, Leinster just, I suppose, want a set piece or just some field position and a chance to maybe work a penalty or a drop goal. Any, any score wins it for Leinster. They'll gamble a little bit in the breakdown. But as for now, La Rochelle playing out of their own 22 with a kick. And it's a good kick from La Rochelle. Burn is back inside they his keep own keep the half. ball now. Hugo Keenan. They've got to keep it. They are a man down, remember. Patience. They've got to be patient, though, with the ball. Burn. Porter was the post. Charlie Natai, the experienced centre. They have got a bit of territory. Please. Can they get it to ground? Yes, they can. Right. Ten right. metre line There's inside La Rochelle's half. A what have ball. Leinster got? Eight minutes on the sin bin, but that's irrelevant because there are only six minutes to go. Kalen Doris drives into Dante. It was high, high from Dante. And they get the penalty. And now, Ross Byrne. What do you think, Paul Grayson? You're the kicking expert. This feels a little bit ambitious from Byrne. First Will he go for it for glory? First and foremost, dreadful technique from Dante under no pressure. If he's made head contact here, he's a goner. No need for him to hit that hard and that high. Could have just chopped his man, forced them to recycle and play. But uh, I have to say, it frustrated. Jameson Gibson Park there just played straight away for the penalty. They had advantage. They could have kept going. This could be red here, actually. Well, I've seen plenty of replays of the. Uh, the first contact, I mean, it's whether it's on the chin. First contact for me is chest into shoulder, and then there is contact with the head. But Let's try and listen in to the referee Piper. It's going to be a card, isn't it? It might just be yellow because that first yeah. contact wasn't head. Listen in. There Here's is Piper. The head, but there is force going through the body, so there's many indirect. Yeah. Been mitigated down from a red to a yellow. Dante off. 14 on 14 for the final five minutes of the Champions Cup final. That's a massive mistake from Dante. I mean, bend six inches, you're tackling a, you're tackling a massive person. He should be nowhere near his head. They had the one-man advantage. They've given it away. They've given away possession. They're on the cross of the tent and the five-metre line. Byrne can drive this into the 22 without having to flirt with the corner flag. Just what Leinster needed. This would be some finish if Leinster can their only foray into La Rochelle. 22 if they could come away with some points here. Byrne nudges it, not quite close enough, but into the 22. They got a patience, they got to play with the ball, retain the ball and play for a penalty. This is the game. This is the game, this is the Champions Cup. Remember, 
they got a man in the bin. It was Ronan Kelleher, wasn't it? So Van der Fleer has to throw in. So they've got to go to the front of the line out, haven't they? Unless Van der Fleer can go to the tail. That's not straight, is it? Oh, it's okay. Ross Byrne, Kaelin Doris, 22. Will Byrne look for a drop goal for glory? Still five minutes left. Here comes Van der Fleer on the switch. Despair in tackling by La Rochelle. 20 metres out, Leinster, in centre field, Gibson Park, to Porter, he drives on, does Burn fancy a drop goal, Ala Alatoa with the drive, 18 metres out, Leinster, their first bit of phase play in ages, Ross Burn waiting himself, there for Gibson Park, four minutes left in Dublin, Ala Alatoa drives, good rucking from Leinster, Gibson Park wanted the penalty, didn't get it, Porter steps, La Rochelle come pouring forward, but the referee was happy. Byrne flings it out to Nartai. They might have a two on one. Charlie Nartai, he's still going. He's only five metres out. He is just short of the line. He gets it to ground. Leinster a metre away from Champions Cup destiny. Under four minutes to go. One point in it. Still they dig for the ball, Leinster. They are inches short after the Nartai burst. Maloney pops it up. Listen to the noise round Dublin. Leinster 26, La Rochelle 27. Three and a half minutes to go in this gripping, pulsating Champions Cup final. Again, Leinster pick and go. Three minutes left on the clock in Dublin. Leinster 26, La Rochelle 27. Leinster picking and going trying to kick down the La Rochelle door. It's do been more. all La Rochelle this second half. Leinster's first meaningful attack. Van der Fleer's almost up to the line. La Rochelle hounds on the ball, but there for Gibson Park. Out to Ringrose who steps. Is he isolated Ringrose? The ball shot out. It's a turnover and Leinster have lost it. First man in by from La Rochelle was on the ball and they will clear their lines from underneath their own crossbar. That is it, they have to do more against La Rochelle than picking and jam. La Rochelle are too good at it, you know? Doolan, he clips, Low. do they fancy a drop goal? No, Lowe will run it, James Lowe, 15 metres out, the physicality frightening. To the left they come, Ryan Baird, what a bust. They've got to protect this ball. There are two and a half minutes left. Keenan sets it up, La Rochelle hands on the ball, surely Byrne looks drop goal, Paul Grayson. Has to move the ball to the middle of the field, get towards the post as it pops out. Byrne to bed, Byrne's rucking, you've got to think drop goal, or maybe they've got numbers to the left. Caelan Doris, Doris to within five or six metres. Two minutes left, what a game, what a cup final, what a stand from La Rochelle, what a tax from Leinster. Van der Fleer, oh look at him go, the World Player of the Year. Still there, to the left they come, Hugo Keenan up to the line, one metre short, inches between Leinster and Glory, but there's a stoppage because La Rochelle have a player down. Steve, this is an extraordinary finish. For the first time, practically in the second half, Leinster have field position and they have gone through multiple phases and they are just short of the line. But there's been a stoppage because the La Rochelle player's got a head injury. So as Leinster were attacking three or four metres out, they're going to have to get the stretcher, I think, because the La Rochelle player, it might be their prop hero, Colom, who scored the try, is down prone and looking in a very difficult position, but the score is Leinster 26, La Rochelle 27, and we've got 90 seconds left of the Champions Cup final. Leinster will have a scrum five metres out when we resume. Looks pretty serious, and whatever it's going to happen, you've got to feel <laughs> La Rochelle are going to go for a push on this one, that's for sure. Well, they had their, they had their opportunity when they turned the ball over a metre from their own line. It went back to Doulin. I couldn't see which forward had to pass it back to him. Doolan couldn't find touch and the relief of a set piece to defend. James Lowe caught the ball well inside the Larishal half and charged back into the 22. Leinster back on the attack. All the rhythm broken now with the injury. Yeah, and what they've done is they've taken Jimmy O'Brien off, I think. And is that to bring on to have a full eight for the scrum? Keen Healy will go yeah. and play hooker like he did against Scotland in no, the Six Nations. Dan, no, Dan Sheen is on, so they've obviously oh, been yes, a swap they, as well. Oh, yes, they were able to bring Sheen Andrew back. Okay. Yeah, because in the Six Nations there were injuries, weren't there? But yeah. Sheen is okay to play. Oh. 
They're seeing a replay of something that got the crowd very animated. I do. Yeah, is that a play? Are they looking there for foul play, though? Oh, they're looking at Ala Alatoa. This could be the game right here. Because if Ala Alatoa gets done for an illegal clear, that will be it. That's going to be the game, and that's going to be the Champions Cup. Because Ala Alatoa is being done for a reckless clear, which would give a penalty to La Rochelle. That'll be the game. He comes from a distance. No, no one seemed to wrap. Wait. Penalty. Well, it would have been a scrum to Leinster and because the is? stoppage, when it happens, Leinster I'll were in possession. Right, Here's the referee, Piper. Gary Ringrose is trying to remonstrate, but Yaka Piper won't be interested. It's going to be a card, maybe, for Alatoa. Let's listen in. This is Yaka Piper. The player's eagle over the ball. He comes from a distance. You've got that shoulder. Danger. It's no going to be red card. So red card for Ala Alatoa. As if this game needed any more twists and turns. Yeah, that, the, the colours immaterial at this point with a minute and 45 seconds to go. It's what it means for the game though. Yeah. Uh, and you, you can't argue with a red card when you've got getting stretchered off. You know, he's getting stretchered off. He's... And the trouble, the trouble is there as Al Alatoa goes to clear the rook. He knows it's a rook they're losing, so he's gone. Look, nobody's trying to hurt anybody. Yeah. He's he, he's just seen a desperate situation. He's launched himself. What he's not had, because the, the defensive player was in such a good position, there's nowhere for him to wrap his arm, so he's tucked his right arm underneath, caught him on the head. Right decision from the referee, but it gives Larishel the ball, control of the ball, one-man advantage, which... Again, it's probably immaterial at this point. They just need to find a way of winding the clock to the red and getting the ball out. Well, nice respect from all the fans here, blue or yellow, to Georges Henri Colomb, who is being stretched off. And Yako Piper, that's very cool in the heat of the moment in such a, an important part of the game to notice the head injury and realize that the most important thing is that Colomb gets treated. He stopped the play, even though Leinster were only a matter of meters from the line. But on the replays, Ala Alatoa was found to have done an illegal and dangerous clear. He's been sent off. Leinster are down to 13. And the big question with 78 minutes and 14 seconds gone and La Rochelle one point up, the big question is whether Leinster will get another chance or whether that's it, Dennis Hickey. I think that was it. You know, I think they had enough chance there. Picking and jamming against La Rochelle around the fringes is a, is a, is a tough way to try and make some yardage. I thought maybe getting into the pocket a bit early for Ross Byrne might have been the option. Uh, they're just playing for that next phase, but you know, it's so easy from up here. They were so close. Well, the kick hasn't gone far from Hastoy. He can't believe it. Um, assistant referee Ridley has it in between the 22 and the 10 meter line. We're right above it. What a perfect view we've got here. 90 seconds left of the Champions Cup final. Leinster 26, La Rochelle 27 thrown into the lineup by La Rochelle. it's all of this they go to the tail oh how brave was that van der Fleer gets in and I think he's given the penalty away he will argue that it was outside the 15 already but already formed says the referee he's gone in at the side and La Rochelle are ready to celebrate look below us they know they know they are one minute away from glory again going back to back only to lose and Toulon have done that they've got to be careful here La Rochelle they're getting the hurry up from the referee 50 seconds left as Hastoy takes his time and kicks it just short of the halfway line Dennis Hickey well I think Leinster will we'll look back and say we had our chance but the reality is they have they have a one attacking period in the entire second half they just defended and defended and defended and they were never really able to impose any sort of game on, on La Rochelle in that second half and and, and, and they've paid a price for it unfortunately oh, they've gone to the tail that is that is brave stuff a couple of times magnificent throw yeah. what a throw from the replacement of Quentin Lesbiak that's just magic and now La Rochelle know they've done it 15 seconds to go unless Leinster can somehow get the ball back La Rochelle are going to win and break Leinster's heart and it's going to be deja vu from Marseille last year five seconds left the ball is on the floor what's referee Jaco Piper going to say he's happy is he it's back in La Rochelle possession it's going to be Aldrete the captain 
Aldrich actually sends it back to Hastoy. He kicks it up towards us in the commentary box. And La Rochelle players invade the pitch. They've done it again. Leinster's bogey team. Coached by Leinster's bogeyman, Ronan O'Gara. Have taken a step into Champions Cup rugby immortality. They've won it again. And they've done it in Dublin. What an effort from La Rochelle. Leinster 26. La Rochelle 27, Leinster heartbroken, disconsolate, but look at the joy from the men in yellow. And the champion side, because, you know, to come to play in Dublin, Leinster's backyard, to be 20 odd points down in the first few minutes, and literally in the first few minutes as it was, within the first 10, 15 minutes, and to come back and to just have the calmness and to be able to score at the right time, but critically, it was exactly the same as last year. They ground them down. The power Leinster absorbed. And it was heroic defence by Leinster in that second half. So many other teams would have coughed up more points. But ultimately, it did two things. It drained Leinster. And it really put... And Leinster were never able to mount an attack because they spent all the rugby uh, in their own half and most of it in their own 22. And fair play to La Rochelle because, you know, they've, they've, they've really come and they've played. They've scored some good tries. And they've they've done what Leinster. Ha what, what, uh, the only way to beat Leinster is to is to score tries against, them, but also dominate them up front. And not many teams can do it, but this La Rochelle side, their, their bench was stronger, uh, and their players, uh, they're their big players. Play. Will Skelton played the whole match. Usually only last sixty, uh, and their the guys stepped up. Levante body was was incredible, and Leinster certainly felt the loss. I think of James Ryan. They went into the game without Jonathan Sexton, and at times they looked like they were a little bit rudderless in that second half. And particularly they needed cam heads when they had that chance to get a, a, to get some sort of points, maybe a drop goal, play for the ne for the for the, the next rook, the next rook, and they they had one shot and they didn't take it. Unfortunately, deeply deeply disappointing for Leinster and Leinster fans. Uh, uh, th there was a lot of respect for La Rochelle, but there was a lot of hope that Leinster would be able to do it here in their own the backyard. But I don't think they can quibble with the results. There was 17 0 down La Rochelle. Absolutely, and I'm the trust. The tennis try before half time sowed the seeds of doubt. You could feel a little bit of the air of confidence that Leinster had built in that first half by being utterly spectacular, particularly in the opening quarter. They were in control of the scoreboard, they were in control of the game. They made a mistake in the backfield, which gave La Rochelle the ball, and they worked through the phases. And a minute and a half before half time, scored a seven pointer, and you could feel the atmosphere change. They are Leinster's bogeymen. They are the team that this looming shadow, we're going to get you in the last 15 minutes because with, as well as skill and craft and everything else, they've just got mass all over the place. All over. Replacing massive players. And we touched on it in commentary. Leinster were having to hit so hard, so often with two men to stop any kind of momentum. Eventually, when they got the ball, they'd run out of the steam to put some of that complex uh, playbook uh, down on the field. And once that opportunity had gone right at the very very end their race was run well it's looking at Ronan O'Gara who's asking one of the security guards maybe to get some of the players families down I'm not quite sure what's happening he's now hugging I think his family and we're just keeping an eye on O'Gara who has orchestrated the most extraordinary win for La Rochelle they were 17 nil down Leinster were rampant playing rugby from the gods but La Rochelle scored two tries in that first half and then the second half was just an absolute obliteration. But Leinster had their chances, Dennis Hickey, so the, close towards the end. They're so close, but yeah, that's where they lack the composure, unfortunately. That's where they lack the ability to, to, to get over the line. And yeah, I thought picking and jamming, you know, they, they go to that game because in 99% of the games or, you know, every every game except this game and that's maybe good to enough, lose, that's good enough because they've got power and they've got great players who can get over. But against this team, they just needed a bit more composure. They just needed something else. Um, I thought maybe they, they would have slotted, maybe you set up for a drop goal a little bit earlier. I'm not sure what you, you know, Paul, when's the, when's the best time to go for it? But um, it just, uh, that was the only chance they had. So, you know, if you only really create one try scoring opportunity in the whole second half um, you're probably going to hang on for a win if you do manage to, to scrape it would have been a remarkable uh, return uh, on the second half performance but it wasn't to be and uh, as I said La Rochelle worthy champions because back to back champions very very rare to do it away from home um, and uh, uh, to do it in the style they did was really impressive and look at the La Rochelle fans behind the post they've travelled from France 
They've come into the lion's den, according to Ronan O'Gara, and they've had a day they'll never forget, and a game we will never forget as neutrals, Paul Grayson. That was special to, 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 to be at, wasn't it? Oh, it's absolutely everything you want in a contest. Whether you're wearing blue or yellow, you'll either be chuffed or gutted by the result, but as a neutral, an absolute joy to be here. The quality of the game, absolutely the highest you'll see in Europe. Everything in there, the, the quick thinking and quick play, the creative coaching and analysis that was put onto the field by Leinster in that opening quarter came out of the blocks. Like a sprinter who gets away quick and you think, surely they can hold on. And then the big guy comes looming in. It's like Usain Bolt, don't care if you're in front after 40. I'll meet you at 60 and then see where you are in the last five. And that's exactly what La Rochelle did. They came strong in that second half. They're all their replacements added. Uh, and it went right down to the wire. Make no mistake, Leicester could have won the game at the end there if that ball hadn't got knocked on, if there hadn't been the collision um, with a La Rochelle player ending up on the floor, which stopped the game, which led to the review, which led to the to the red card. Leicester could have played on and scored, and that would never have even been been looked at. But on f such fine margins, the game has decided. But as a contest, with everything written beforehand, we, you, we almost called it that's the that was the only fear that Leinster had is that they got themselves into a position like last time where the big yellow machine could just roll over and right at the very end yeah they quite simply just do not have enough big men for, 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 for to be was that team. a worry for Ireland come September October well potentially but I'm not sure France are this big actually either yeah you're right I mean, you, know, Bottier, it's a, you know Fijian it's, they, they it's Delton's Australian yeah they have got They've got the most extraordinary physical side I think the game of rugby's ever seen. Yeah. And they're back-to-back -back Champions Cup winners. And the celebrations here in Dublin from the travelling fans, but in the old port of La Rochelle, they will be going long into the night. Heartbreak for Leinster. What an outstanding team they are. But again, the big pot has eluded them. La Rochelle have gone back-to-back. -back. They've etched their name into Champions Cup rugby folklore and that man, Ronan O'Gara, has done it once more to Leinster. What a game. Thank you so much to Dennis Hickey, to Paul Grayson, to everyone who's been with us on Sports Extra. Leinster 26, La Rochelle, the back-to-back -back champions, 27. Have a good evening.